Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Richard Grant and Friends podcast. I'm joined here today by Mr. Danny Wilson and Mr. Tyler Cook, both fitness professionals and former bodybuilders, both, right? You've both competed in yes. the bodybuilding yeah. world. Correct. Yes. Um, so last time you were on with me, which was a couple of months ago now, you were speaking at length about how uh, being heavy, whether it's muscle or fat, uh, is dangerous, mm -hmm. which I'm going to recap with you. Ironically, it's synchronistically, about uh, four weeks after we did that podcast, I became quite sick mm -hmm. because of my weight. Um, let's just briefly recap. Why is it a problem? Let me hand this to you first, Danny. Why is it a problem for the human body to be too heavy? Where shall I start? Wherever you like. My Where dear shall I? Well, say if people say it doesn't matter if if it's muscle. If you're mm -hmm. muscular, then it's fine. Yeah, this is a this is a massive uh, myth. It's a massive mi misconception. Your body, if you are overweight, mm. you are overweight. Mm. Your body doesn't go. No, it's sound. Yeah, this guy's jacked. It doesn't matter. This guy's jacked. If you are carrying excess weight, you're putting more stress on your cardiorespiratory system, you're putting more stress on your body as a whole, mm. and eventually your body's going to go pop. What do you say to that, Mr. Tyler? Absolutely correct, isn't it? I mean, we yeah. said last time, um, and it was more specifically directed at people that use PDs to elevate the body weight beyond reasonable levels, but it's just quite simple. To be heavy, you need more food. Yeah. Eating more food requires more processing. So your digestive system, your liver, your kidneys, yeah. they require more work. Yeah. Uh, we've seen in studies, people that live longer, uh, centurions, I think they're called, that might be the Roman soldier or it could be someone that lives to Cent 100. Centenarians. Um, a centenarian, is it? <laughs> I like centurions, centurions better. Yeah. I think that's a, You're thinking think that's of a, gladiator. Half, a half man, half horse, isn't that? <laughs> that's a, a centaur. centaur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Centaur, centurion. Any of those will do. There Any of go. them. For those people good. that live First to 100, <laughs> they've been proven, it's been shown they hardly eat. They don't really stress the digestive tract that much. They don't process that many nutrients. So realistically, yeah, heavy, whether it's muscle or fat, is detrimental. So you've so got to find the balance. Before I talk about my my impending death, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to die, but the doctor said I could die. Um, there are people crying watching yeah, this podcast like, oh, now. Yeah, they're like, oh, fuck, he's going to die. Oh, a sudden abandonment anxiety. Um, when, I, when, I, when we talk stress uh, generally, and I talk because in... In psychology, stress has a special meaning and it's a broader meaning. And I think in fitness, it's a, a special meaning and a broader meaning because you have to study biology, whether you want to or not, you're, you're in the realm of biology. Yeah. I think my impression I'm getting from most people is when they think of stress, they think of a person who's super anxious and super stressed out about a certain issue. But when you're talking about stress on the body from weight and stress on the body from processing food, it's slightly different, right? Do you have to explain this to clients? Do you have to explain the difference between their idea of what they think stress is and what actual stress is? Um, it's never really come up in any conversations with clients with me when mm -hmm. it comes to the difference between um, psychological stress and physical stress. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's anything you've ever had to talk about. Time. I mean, usually you're not going to go that deep no. because your systems you put in place, mean yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. ask the question, yeah, right? Right. There's no real A lot need, of people say, oh, I've lost loads of weight. I feel so much better. It must have just been the body fat. Well, not really, you know, mm. yeah. losing weight itself, like we said before, mm. comes with a plethora of different benefits, whether it is cellular level stress reduction or whatever. They, yeah. they just assume it's just good. They don't know what's happened. <laughs> a uh, good thing has happened. Yeah, I've me. lost weight. I feel better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So in, when I'm when I'm talking to people in terms of psychology, because they'll go, unless I've kicked the dog and smashed the car in, I'm not stressed. I always try and say like, you, there's in psychological terms, say it's like the bolts on a plane that are on the wings of a plane. They're designed to take a certain amount of pressure. Yep. And when you start exerting more pressure than they're designed for, then the rivets and everything else become stressed. Mm -hmm. And there's actual... You could, engineers can see scarring. Mm -hmm. They can see where it's pushed too, too far. If the stress continues, it literally becomes trauma because things start to pop and they start to break. So psycholo like in psychology, that's what I would say. Like you've got certain anxiety levels that are tolerable and it's not going to affect you long-term, but certain anxiety levels that you, the client, are experiencing daily that you think are no it's not normal. You're now stressed. Can can you explain how a, an excessive consumption of food can be stressful? to Because to me, I've been, obviously, like, I'm not at your level, but I've been thinking about this for years. It makes sense to me. But I think for most people, they don't get that too much food is actually stressful for the system. 
it's horrendous for you, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, someone said to me the other day, they don't do drugs, they don't drink, they just like the food. And I said, that's great, but realistically, food's dangerous. Yeah. Food is very dangerous. It's dopaminergic. So it's much like, you know, drugs or alcohol. You mm-hmm. get a boost off food mm-hmm. that can become addictive. And a lot of people, especially with a lot of the movements now of being like, overweight, healthy, people just think, that's oh, all good. I only yeah. really like my food. Mm-hmm. But like you said, realistically, you're yeah. stressing your gut, you're stressing your organs. Um, physiologically, I mean, the energy levels, your, your blood sugar levels are all becoming stressed and yeah. they just don't help you, do they? I mean, most people that tend to be unhealthy mentally, physically aren't that stable either. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, physiology determines mm-hmm. psychology and vice versa. So you, so you just said something that I think most people like gloss over because probably because they don't like to think about it. They're stressing their guts. Yeah. So just that one thing, your guts are pipes. And yeah. when you eat, like there's a certain amount of solid mass that goes in this hole, goes through the piping system, goes out the other yeah. fucking hole. Yeah. More is not, is not I've, <laughs> such a bit, like every fucking podcast, <laughs> grown <hole>. man, <laughs> grown 46. Well, you can't say, <laughs> and then it goes through the other hole and, ex- <laughs> and expect everyone to go, hmm, yes, hmm. 46 <laughs> years old, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so more, so more like the, and even, I always think like the, the quality of what you've put through. Mm-hmm. Nobody thinks about that now, well, man. People, Nobody. People say to me, like, so I'm eating, I've had this conversation with girlfriends when they, when they live in, why do you eat so much veg? And I'm like, did you see how much chicken I ate? And they go, yeah, and? Like, have you seen the consistency of fucking chicken? It's like leather boot. Mm, yeah. It has to go the through The thermic me. effect is massive on proteins. Huge. And that can be a good thing because it mm. delays digestion. And that's why mm. I say a high protein diet is going to get people yeah. leaner because inherently yeah. they won't eat more. Yeah. But you're right. Like, I've had people say to me, I'm just bloated every day. It's got to be PCOS. It's yeah, got yeah, to yeah. be IBS. I mean, that must be the most self-diagnosed thing alongside yeah, yeah, yeah. ADHD. Yeah, IBS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because... Oh, I've got IBS, you know. What did you eat yesterday? Wow, well, I had a chippy. I had a chippy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'd have a bowl of oats in the morning. I'm like, you're not even got fucking IBS. You're yeah. a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, IBS, you're, eating, you're a mess. Yeah, yeah, you're a mess. Like it's it. a t-shirt. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, but you're eating yeah. high trans fat down. foods. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you're destroying your gut microbiome. Yeah. I mean, but it's stuff that is quite, it's complex really. And it's not like the supermarkets help. It's not like Gordon Ramsay helps. No one really tells anyone, do no, they? they? Av- and the advertising doesn't help. Yeah. Like they'll go, here's a McDonald's. That's delicious. Uh, picked a girl up. Uh, uh, from the airport, I didn't pick it. Wow, fuck. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, just, I picked up from say, the airport. We, we need as to I talk sh- about this kind of behaviour, Richard. As I should have done. I say girl <laughs> because we're from the north of England. She is a woman. She's 30. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Sweet Jesus. Um, and uh, it's midnight, he says I'm hungry. I'll just get some chicken nuggets. And I was like, I, I, was like, I don't want to go into a lecture here, but... <laughs> Your body then has to do something with that, yeah, and you're yeah, going to yeah. go asleep. Mm-hmm. And I, like yeah. I said, look at look at them; they're like little pieces of rubber. Yeah. But you're now the, there's the um, there seems to be like a detachment from the stuff we're putting mm-hmm. into our bodies, Danny. Mm. And the effect you the don't effect, help me. <laughs> <laughs> the, effect that, the effect it can have. So so my point was just like maybe maybe something to do is to try and help people to think about this in a way that's a little bit more coherent. That's because I think we dissociate with food. Like, oh, yeah. yummy biscuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because from childhood, yeah. Yeah. you've been a 100%. good boy. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Good. People are childish totally, for that. Totally. We expect parents to be nutritionists, don't we? Right. And they're not going to have the no. single clue either. <laughs> you know, you're expecting a parent to know exactly what a child needs, which is a sensitive yeah. version of a human being. It's, you know, yeah. it, it's malleable. You can, you can build habits in childhood. I mean, I've seen studies that say obesity in parents passes on through to children. Yes. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of information to take in and that's exactly why I've ranted all the time about how you have to MOT your car legally, mm. but no one gives a single shit no. what your insides look like on a yearly basis. Or Strange what, that, it's isn't insane. It? Yeah. It's insane. Because because collectively we do all bear the burden of that in this country. Yeah. You know, we have a national health service. We let people do what they want to their bodies with food. Uh, the, the quote you gave before, Jack Black says something like that in the School of Rock. Somebody gives him shit for being overweight and he's like, well, I don't do drugs and I don't drink. Yeah. I like to it's eat. It's validation, isn't it? Yeah. I like to eat, so what? Yeah, yeah. And I had the same thought as you. It was like, well, you couldn't stand there and say, I love to snort beak. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I like injecting an H. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And people watch this and go, it's not the same. Yeah. If if yeah. you knew a bit more, yeah, like yeah, yeah. actually yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's killing people. It's like they, they try and people who say that kind of thing, they try and excuse their behavior because they know what they're doing wrong. They know that they're not supposed to be in the quantity of the food and the quality of the food that they're consuming. Mm. So then the only argument they've got is, yeah, but I don't drink. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but I don't, you know, I don't do anything else. Yeah. I just, I just love me food. And it's a very sensitive subject, isn't very it? Very sensitive. Food. Yeah. 
I mean, we'll say it in the comments, we'll be like, oh, body shaming, or mm -hmm. I like to, I, I'm going to eat whatever I want, and you three steadheads can't, blah, blah, blah. Mm. you'll get shit. <gasps> yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we also have feelings, not much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little one. And yeah. we have vices. And we have yeah. vices. And you're allowed to have a vice. Yeah, yeah. I just don't, it's acknowledging it that's important, isn't it? Yeah, be honest. 100%. That's the thing. Be honest with yourself. And like, food tastes a lot better when you learn about restriction. And I, I, I love food. No one loves food as much as me. I mm. partially say I'm a bodybuilder. I was a bodybuilder because I liked food. Yeah. But I do think it's it's definitely going under the radar in regards to like, you know, even even whether it's parents to the children or mm -hmm. parents at the weekend, it's like, well, as long as my kid's in the bedroom on his own quiet, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, he can yeah, have yeah. his pack of Doritos and yeah. his two litre Coke. I don't really care, you know. That's where you're going drastically wrong. They, they used to send them to school like that when I was working in school. So being in school and then kids would come in and they go, these are the ones with ADHD and behavioural problems. And you say, what have you eaten today? Yeah, like, let's look in your lunchbox. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> it's a pack of the Doritos and a Red Bull yeah. or two Red Bulls. <laughs> And then they, they're like that rocking, hitting themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the teachers are going, yeah, there's something wrong with him. <laughs> yeah, ca he's off his barn. He's like off caffeine. his face on yeah. drugs. People don't realise caffeine works via milligram per kilogram, like most drugs. Yeah. Right. If you're giving a monster to a 50 kilo human being, they're going to go off their head. 100%. 100%. That's, have you seen, there's a, we, you've, you know the, the, the latest craze and drinks that the kids are all drinking. Sounds like fucking prime, is it? Oh, I wasn't going to say it, but it, yes, prime. It, it sounds mute that. You've seen prime. Are you not, we're not allowed to say prime. Oh, you're Just supporting bullshit, know. aren't we? Oh, I guess. Okay, yeah. okay, we're okay. probably going to get ourselves in trouble again. I drank one of them. It tastes like piss. <laughs> I like it. I, piss. I, well, I like piss. No, so, <laughs> my point was there's two versions of this drink. There's like yeah. a juice drink, yeah. which all the kids are drinking, and they've brought out an energy drink, which is like a little Red Bull, like a little monster thing. Right. And there's been instances of kids drinking this prime drink mm. and like absolutely losing the bananas mm. because like you've just said, I, th I think there's 140 milligrams of caffeine in it. Yeah. If you're giving a nine year old 140 milligrams yeah. of caffeine. That's what we gonna, take on a pre-workout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Terrible yeah. consequences. That's what so it, that's then what they're going, oh my God, this, this prime drink's got something in it. Yeah. Caffeine. Lots of caffeine. Number one drug in the world. Lots of caffeine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, na so nine-year-olds will take 140 yeah. milligrams. Am I wrong? Like most pre-workouts have we seen 140 and 160 milligrams, maybe 200. Fucking more. I mean, I was going to say, These we're days. very much in the conservative end because I okay. wouldn't take more than 200 in the yeah. pre, but I know people yeah. that oh, do God, 400. There's four, of, there's four and 500, but there's some crazy ones out there now. There's guys on, and I hate saying it, the TikTok. I, don't, I haven't got a TikTok, but where mm. they'll do like 1,000 milligrams pre-workout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll vomit. You, you, you have heart palpitation. Yeah, you could die. Yeah, that's, that's You that's can death. die from caffeine, yeah. 100%. Oh, 100%, you can. Anything, well, anything over, uh, anything over 400 milligrams yeah. is classed as... Uh, misuse. It's, it's like it's, yeah. it's a it's a classification. Four hundred milligrams of caffeine. If you're having that in a day, that's that's, that's misuse of yeah. caffeine. Yeah. But a nine year old can chug. Yeah. Well, they're not supposed to. Because you're supposed do. to be, which again is ridiculous. You're supposed to be sixteen to buy this drink. Mm. Yeah. Which, like, which I think is too low. Right. Um. But because it's prime, mm. parents don't want to say uneducated parents because that makes them sound bad, but parents yeah. who don't really they understand it, yeah. they just see Prime and go, oh, it's that Prime drink that he likes. I'll get him one. Tsh, little Johnny, next 140 milligrams of caffeine and is absolutely off his barnet, ends up having to go to hospital because his heart is going 10 to the dozen. Yeah. If you imagine I'm 90 kilos, mm. if I have if I have two or 300 milligrams of caffeine, I fucking you're know yeah. Yeah. that I've had two or 300. If you're... Oh, I don't know, uh, Mason's 10. I, God, I don't even know how much he weighs. Not not a lot. Less than, yeah. If he had 140 milligrams of caffeine, mm. it's probably the equivalent of, of of us having like 700, 800 milligrams that's of caffeine. that's in low tolerance individuals, yeah. isn't it? With yeah. no build so, up. 100%. Yeah. We've, yeah. we've been drinking caffeine for years because mm. it's a, it's the most widely used drug in the world. Mm. We've been drinking caffeine for years. So you introduce caffeine to uh, a body that's never had it, mm. that's tiny. Yeah. And to that, yeah, it's catastrophic. It's yeah. catastrophic. Way too much. Way, way too much. So uh, from stress, uh, food, and being too heavy, let me tell you how I'm going to die in uh, eight to 12 years, <laughs> ladies and gents. Um, so I, I was told by a lady, she said to me, you're stopping breathing in your sleep. And I went, are you sure I'm stopping breathing? She said, yes. She told me that, and I, I was like, oh, I better look up sleep apnea. The statistic for sleep apnea, Danny, <clears throat> studies show that patients <clears throat> who develop sleep apnea before the age of 50 have a life expectancy between 8 and 12 years. Mm -hmm. That 
made me a little anxious. So then every time I went to sleep, I became hyper aware yeah. of the apnea kicking yeah. in. And it feels like somebody's put a pillow over your face. Uh, so sleep apnea is upper airway collapse, which means that oxygen can't reach your cells. So I, I then went into, uh, I was in Ibiza at the time, not doing anything, I was just working as I, I do. I, not listen, here to judge, brother. Listen, <laughs> I don't know why I looked straight at you and was like, listen, I wasn't not doing here, anything. Not here to judge. <laughs> so it got to the point where I'd go asleep, panicking I was going to get an, uh, an attack. I'd get an attack. I'd get mm -hmm. like an, an incident yeah, of apnea, yeah. wake up sweating and gasping, mm -hmm. and then I'd have to take an hour-long walk for the anxiety to go down, mm -hmm. go back to sleep for an hour, hour-long walk. Did that for two weeks and then started to go yeah, because cat, cat, sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation. Yeah, yeah. I'm reading a book called Life and Fate at the moment. It's about like uh, the um, uh, the the Russian people trying to survive between the Nazis attacking them on one side and then their own state, the Soviets attacking them. Sounds like a, a joy to read. Oh, it's lovely. It's a beautiful book, <laughs> yeah. Life and Fate by Vitaly Grossman. They had all different forms of torture for mm -hmm. the Russians. Yep, 100%. The, the one that they feared the most yep. was sleep deprivation. Yep. And it because it drove people fucking mad. Yeah. They would interrogate... Uh, a prisoner to try and get them to denounce their comrades. Why they were obsessed with this, I don't know, mad communists. If they really wanted to break a resistant prisoner, it wasn't beatings, it wasn't like pulling their fingernails out. They were just on, um, they just take turns, keep interrogating them, keep inter don't let them sleep, keep them sat on one man. stool. And people would just say, they'd lose all sense of self yeah. and lose all sense of perception and time. And just and just turn into jelly. Mm -hmm. So they're not because if you're beating somebody, they can resist it. Yeah, the yeah, ego yeah. can resist it. There was no ego resistance after four or five days. They were saying there was like battle hardened generals at fifty years old, and they would sob. It's they'd horrendous. Just cry like children. I, when I was in the air force, serving Her Majesty. <laughs> when I was in the air force, I did a stint at RAF Saint Morgan. Mm. RAF Saint Morgan is the final stage. I think it's the final stage of special forces selection is that it's called the escape and evade phase. Is so that for RAF regiment? That's No, that's for SAS, SBS. Oh, it's, for, it's for special forces. So what we would do, we would go out, we would play the hunter force. Mm. So the, um, the special forces operatives, the trainees that hoping to hoping to pass, they would mm. go out onto the moors with, no, with nothing. Mm -hmm. After a day or so, we'd, you'd, all, we'd, you'd always catch them after a day or so. Yeah. Bring them back to the base. And exactly what you've just said then, we would keep them awake. Yeah. You'd keep them in stress positions. Nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing, not like hanging them from the bollocks by the fucking, the, by ropes and stuff. Mm. Just stood against the wall, just sat down and just slowly, as the hours ticked by, they mm. were cold mm. and they were, uh, and they were very, very tired. Mm. As the tiredness kicks in, they started to become delirious. And they've forgotten their own training And they were just completely, and then, I don't think this is fucking secret. Well, if it is, I'll find out. <laughs> when so, da when but, Danny disappears, yeah. suddenly, no, it's been in, <laughs> falling it's, off a balcony. It's been in books. Yeah. Oh, his brakes didn't work. <laughs> it's so. One, so when they were really tired, we would take them into various rooms, and it would be it would be like this. It'd be like a th each room would have a different theme. Oh, you. Fuckers. So you'd go into a room, and it you would be fuckers. it would be all white, and there'd be someone sat there in a white coat, and they'd just be talking to this guy, and this guy'd just be like, "Oh my god, where the fuck am I?" talk to him for half an hour, put the hood back on, take him out, walk him over different surfaces. Mm. But because they were super, super tired, mm. didn't even, they, they literally couldn't cope. Yeah. And, and that, a lot of people fail that phase because, because it's just psychologically too much. Yes, there needs to be, if there's a core of your identity that can resist, yeah. you're, you're probably gonna be okay, but if you can break the core, What's, the, 100%. what's, res what's resisting? Hundred percent. And if you, you can be the the most mentally resilient, hard bastard, mm. go a couple of days without sleep. Well, you look at yourself completely differently. I started to go mad. I started to started. Get, I, I went madder. <laughs> wow. I got I got like really bad. I've never had anxiety in my life, but I started to get really severe anxiety attacks that were totally unreasonable, mm -hmm. came from nowhere, and yeah, I couldn't yeah. couldn't do anything with them. Yeah. Cognitively, couldn't work with it. Nothing I tried would work. Um, and so eventually I was like, oh God, I'm going to have to, I need to see somebody, I need to see somebody desperately. So I booked, like, uh, I was staying in, in uh, Buckinghamshire, booked a heart, a, an appointment with a surgeon on Harley Street. I went there, she looked at me and she was like, these aren't anxiety attacks. You're going into brain hypoxia. So once your brain 
uh, gets, I think it's under 94% or low. It's, it's only mild hypoxia, but she said it's not really an anxiety attack. Your body's sending you a stress signal to mm -hmm. wake up because you are dying yeah, in yeah, sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was, I think I told you this, I thought my sister's kids had come over from America and I woke up at my mum's house and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I'll take the boys to the park. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. They're in America. Yeah. Went, took them to, I walked across multiple roads to get there at half five in the morning. Yeah, my mum was yeah, like, Jesus. where are you going? I was taking a walk, came back, fell asleep for another half an hour. So like, where's the boys? Said, they're in America, yeah. you fucking idiot. <laughs> the, Amer the American kids. Yeah, the American kids are in America yeah. where they belong. I had a full mm -hmm. uh, waking, uh, 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 what do you call it? Hallucination that I was there at the park. Do you know where boys. that comes from? So, do you remember Rabsi Nesbit? Do you remember Rabsi Nesbit? Yeah, I do. I do. You fucking don't, do you? No, 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 no. You knew I didn't, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I started speaking and then went, oh, bastard. Do you remember Benny Hill? <laughs> so, do you remember Rabsi Nesbit? He used to have these things called the DTs. Oh, yeah. The delirium tremors. Yeah. So, the DTs is something which I'm not saying that you are. Alcoholics get it. Yeah. Because we've spoken of this before. Al if, if you consume too much alcohol, you don't get enough REM sleep. Yeah. REM sleep is the, is the dream sleep, right? Your emotional yeah. repair, your emotional regeneration. If you're not getting enough REM sleep, there comes a point where your body goes, listen, kid, mm. I know you don't want it. We're having REM sleep now. Right. So you start to dream when you're awake. awake. Yeah. And that's where, so Rabsi Nesbitt famously used to see a pink elephant, didn't he? Mm -hmm. That was his DTs. And it'd be like, oh my fucking God, mm -hmm. that pink elephant's here again. Well, that's, so you're, you were hallucinating while yeah. you're awake. Yeah. I've hallucinated loads in training, but you were hallucinating while you're awake because mm. you were at a level where you were that deprived of REM sleep yeah. that your brain went, Richard, you're not going to like this. <laughs> it's time to sleep. We're having it. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to dream now. And you, you, so you're dreaming while you're awake. So for all intents and purposes, you're sat there and you're like, oh, there's my nephews. And your mum's going, <laughs> what? Yeah. Call, call the nut house. Where? Well, it, it, one of the weird things that happened um, was the, like, I so I went into, I was going into the psychosis. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side of that, every time I'd lie down, I was getting more and more terrified. The terror was ramping up. So if I lay down, the anchor of lying on the pillow, putting my head on the pillow would break me out in a cold sweat. So the one place where you're supposed to be comfortable and take rest was now like yeah, yeah, yeah. torture. So if you've associated it with, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. So that that got really nasty. You're stressing me out a little bit. It's yeah. horrible. It's not that nice. my sleep. You're making me go, not, Whoa. But, but, but everybody, if you can sleep, just remember what a fucking privilege it is to, mm, get, yeah, to be able to just sure. sleep. So years and years ago, uh, when we were doing the door in the living room and I was doing the self-defense classes and then switching over into life coaching, mm -hmm. there was a, a former... Uh, SAS guy who'd served, he'd served in different places, but the the one place he had a problem with, still had PTSD from was Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. Bosnia. Don't know what he saw, don't know what the problem was. He didn't want to talk about it and I didn't need him to. So we would just chat and he told me, and at the time I didn't, I didn't quite believe him, I thought it was embellishing, that no matter what they gave him to sleep, if he was having a PTSD flashback, he could break through it. And the only thing that he could sleep on was if he did like a, a 15 mile ta uh, tab. Uh, do you call them tabs in there, oh, Aria? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or yomps. Uh, yeah, it's tactical a, advance to battle. Tactical advance to battle, a fast walk with a pack on, physically exhaust himself, then he could come back mm -hmm. and crash and get three hours. Xanax, sleeping pills, all this other stuff wouldn't work. And I was like, mm, your body's your body. If the pill's in you, it must shut you down. I took a Xanax mm -hmm. when I was on this and I was like, fuck this. It was four o'clock in the morning. I'm going mad. Yeah. Give me the pill. Let's go. 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Bang, I was awake again. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding yeah. me? The brain's was, a powerful thing, man. Powerful. And it was, I was running on adrenaline. Yeah. Because as I slept, that I was, I was, I was dreaming, I was being suffocated. So I was like, just relax, let the pill do its work. And then this other part of me is going, you're going to yeah. die now, yes. fucker. <laughs> let the pill do its work. I'm Bye. wondering if this is all post doctor telling you you're going to die in 10 years or pre. I can't remember the sequence. Because if the doctor said it mm. first, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, fucking hell. Well, I you, went, you, you start she's to put an yeah, yeah, idea yeah. in your head there she's, for sure. She's, she's good. Like she, she's, a, she's a surgeon, but I was speaking, so I was speaking to two doctors at the same time. Um, one wasn't great and the other one's really, really good. The Harley Street one is really, really good. And I, I went back to her and saw her face to face and I was like, this thing of me dying in 10 years, is it is it definite? And she was like, where have you got that from? Yeah, yeah. And I said, well, that's, it's online, the studies say it, and the other doctor said it, and she was like, we don't know. Nobody yeah. can tell you. Mm -hmm. 
for, with with yeah, sleep. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, anybody who's, who's listening to this, someone's listening with sleep apnea now going, oh my god, I was going to say, die. Oh the, the average man has had sleep apnea mm. for like thirty years, yeah. so they're all so, doing great. I think I think there are studies, and this is what she reminded me. There are studies. If you go online, yes, if you're under the age of forty five and you have severe sleep apnea, which I do, so I went to a sleep yeah. clinic. Anything over thirty stoppages an hour of your breathing is considered severe. I'm at fifty five. Have you been given an MPAP at all? That's I've what got I a CPAP now. You yeah. have now. I've yeah. got one now. Um, so 55, so it's severe. So if you're under the age of 50, you get diagnosed with severe, it's eight to 12 years and you'll be dead. Is the, what the studies say. But then as she said to me, she was like, do you know Do you know who they were studying? Do you mm-hmm. know the people involved? Yeah. Were they clinically obese? Yeah. She said, Stud- th- that's the thing with studies. We've, we've studies, spoken about yeah. studies loads of times. Statistics, I mean... What do you like? You can you can cut them different ways. Yeah, she also yeah, yeah. said it's multifactorial. Yeah. So she said uh, they'll offer you surgery. She said if you go to other doctors, they'll they'll want to chop the lining out of your nose. They'll want to cut your tongue to make it smaller. She said, "Oh yeah, sorry, surgery." Oh my uh, god. Your throat. She said they can they'll we can open your throat with lasers. Danny, she said, "I've got a really thick tongue." I was like, "Baby, no." Uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, you're Listen. not the first person to tell me that. <laughs> All the birds Carry on, my that. darling. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, like, if, if your tonsils are big or your tongue is too thick, it's more likely to, to yeah, close off Yeah, because when you relax, airway. it kind of sits, not a lot, but it will sit back. I do but love if you, how, if you've got a larger tongue. Mm. I do love how that's been mentioned before anyone said anything about, like, mm. body fat or anything. Like, mm. So where would you go to first? Well, well I'd have you, thought that's body fat. That's usually my like, body fat, for, and that's not just because I'm a fitness guy. It's quite a blessing that it's in our field. But ninety mm-hmm. percent of issues before medication are just a body weight mm-hmm. thing, body fat thing. Body you know? fat this is a medication. They were going to fire lasers at him, and they were going to cut his tongue out. Yeah, they're, they're about to cut your tongue out, cut your nose apart. You just get jacked more than and they're hating on you. But, <laughs> the, and, 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 just and they just can't handle it, Rich. They're just jealous with that big tongue they have a big tongue cut it off so so they, 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 they she was very good she put me on like strong medicine stuff and it did help the i've damaged my nose uh through cocaine use and uh the 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 lining of my nose she said i had the worst case of nasal swellings you'd ever seen oh, okay. so i'd shut that because she was saying to me how's your breathing i was like oh it's a little difficult sometimes <gasps> And she, <laughs> she she shoved the uh, endoscopy up my nose and she was like, a little difficult to breathe. It's closed in here. I was like, oh, I'd, I'd be fine. Don't yeah. worry about that. Do you use um, Sinex? I, that was, that's, the damage is actually, this is what she explained to me. I thought it was cocaine. She said, cocaine doesn't do this damage. It's the nasal spray. So your nose looks understand. good. I thought you meant to have no nose when you sniff cocaine. You, uh, you can burn through the septum. Which I've not, there's no damage yeah, to my yeah. septum. Ah, okay. Bo- boxing's bent the septum. That's causing a bit of a problem. But the over-the-counter nasal spray. I've had this conversation with loads of people. It's heavy shit. It's heavy shit. Yeah. And it could, I've, I've looked into it. It can give you, it can potentially give you brain damage. And if you keep using it, your no, your nasal lining will just cease to work. If you could it. just look at one of the cameras and just say that to Amy, please. Is Amy using oh, it? All day, mate. You've got, you've got to stop. All day. You've got to find a way. Go, go, go she and see. She won't listen to me. She might listen to you. Go and see an ear, nose and throat specialist. And they have other drugs uh, that that are good that can wean you off this stuff so your nose just doesn't need it. Don't think because it's over the counter, it's safe. Yep. It oh, yeah. fucking isn't. Well, definitely it's, don't it's do heavy. that. It's really, but it's bad stuff. I went over to America and I was like, I went on their phenylephrine which is what we use in the clinics here. So I, I now have to have it sent over from America. So my doctor here is like, fucking hell, lad. It's hard work, isn't it, being It's hard work. So what they've, what, what none of them said and where I was leading to, I uh, spoke to three different doctors. None of them said weight loss. And I brought it up with them. And the last girl I brought it up with, she conceded after medicine, uh, corticosteroids, mm-hmm. cutting the nose, cutting the throat, cutting the tongue, CPAP machine for the rest of my life. Yeah. I was like, come on, weight loss. She said, if you lost a lot of weight, you'd probably off the CPAP in a year. Oh, thank you. I don't. Thank Why did we much. start there? I think it's because it's, it's socially unacceptable to mention someone's weight. What I would like to know because doctors are not stupid and I'd never say that. Of They're course. very, very smart people. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if it's because whether it's in the past or whether it's just down to the fact the individual has to make that life choice. They just can't bother with that. Mm. They can't say to you, Lose a bit of weight because that's on you. Mm. They yeah. can give you this. They can inject you with yeah, that. They yeah, can put yeah, you, they yeah. can put a hole yeah, in your that's tongue. A, that's a good. That's a good point. Just man. like this, I know people, and, and this terrifies me, and it does blow my mind. I know people, um, you know, partners of friends of mine that have got gastric bands just mm-hmm. to lose a bit of weight. Yeah, You've yeah. had an invasive surgery, had yeah, your yeah, stomach yeah. twisted yeah. around because you want to lose a bit of weight. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. Yeah. That well, is actually insane. 
to make money. And as undocked, soon as, that's soon so scary. profit in it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a problem. It's kind of like it? how plastic surgery, you know, when you watch Botched Up Bodies mm. and you're like, no. how is, I love watching <laughs> Botched Up Bodies. You're like, how is a surgeon, someone who's done 10 years in the field, probably got mm. 20 years experience, had a woman walk in who's mm. got boobs the size of yeah. footballs as it is and then got a double dumps. How's he yeah. morally went, yeah, yeah that sounds okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When's someone going to say, hang on, love, you don't need a gastric band. You don't need to cut your tongue out rich. Yeah. Maybe we should just look at your body weight. Yeah. Yeah, Sounds and you like might you hate that because you know no, none of us want to lose muscle or mass. But I mean, yeah. if someone said the same to me, you know, it's I've got friends that have had you know tachycardia or heart issues, and they've just had to lose. Just, I'm going to have mm -hmm. to drop the weight. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. live on statins. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to have to drop the weight. That's put like you said though. That's putting the responsibility on someone else, which we need to look at more people, in modern medicine. People will that needs not to take responsibility more. for themselves. Yeah. Sorry, I I didn't I. I I, I misgendered one of my uh, people there. I didn't misgender her. There was two doctors I've spoken to. The woman who told me to lose weight is a physiotherapist who's the consultant for the use of the CPAP machine. Mm -hmm. And she, even she didn't want to say it. But at the end of an hour-long call, I said to her, come on. Just say it. There's I only me and you here. I'm not going to be offended. I said, I said to her, come on. I, I, I've been, I'm not a, a fitness coach, but I've been teaching people martial arts since I was 21. I know how these things are connected. I know if I've got too much mass in my neck, mm -hmm. or as you yeah, said, yeah. in your traps, your chest, in yeah, your yeah. chest, and I'm lying on my side, and I'm fucking huge. Have you seen me I'm sleep? fat. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, have you been in my bedroom? This is weird. <laughs> <laughs> my chest is all <laughs> things, things are going to close up. And, she, and right at the very end, she said, if you lost a good dose of weight, you'd probably be off the CPAP within a year and never need it again and would yeah. would no longer have a diagnosis of sleep apnea. Luckily, we know this as bodybuilders because yeah. I've got all my mates do CPAPs, yeah, whether, right. they have, whether they have sleep apnea or not. Yeah. Oh, they do just they? do it. Why? Because just they to... want to maximise sleep efficiency. Uh, I've got friends that have done CPAPs off their own accord because bodybuilders tend to, I wouldn't say not trust doctors because that's not a smart thing to do, mm. but they will kind of take it on their own terms and go, I'm going to do a CPAP because I'm not sleeping well. And then they How would a CPAP better. help you sleep though? Have you ever used one? I've never used Well, that's I where I draw the line with bodybuilding. Friend, yeah, that's where I draw the line. That's awful. I've, right. well, I've, not, like worn, I've not worn one, but I know, I know our friend here has. Yeah, it goes so, back to our bodybuilding conversation you wanna... where you couldn't go out with someone that's not a bodybuilder because if you're doing a CPAP yeah. voluntarily. Good night, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I did that two weeks ago. Second have you got day. one that twists on your head? Or have yeah. you got, yeah, so you Second. can't turn in your sleep. Oh, I can. Because some turn. of them don't let you. I can. There's a pipe. Second date. And I was like, listen. I need to talk to you. If you're coming back to the hotel, yeah. there's something about me you need to know. And she it's was not, like, oh, it's fucking not, hell. It's not a fetish. You it could be if you wanted to be. Not a Batman's fit. <laughs> 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 Nobody cared who I was until I put on the mask. So we've got it's a CPAP for people who don't know is a continuous positive airway pressure. And it's a mask that goes over your head. So yeah. there's a strap across here. It's like a full airplane pilots breathing mask over the nose and mouth. It has to vacuum seal. So the straps you have across your jaw and across your head, you tie tight. You wind this across your face and it yeah. really gives you a nice sleep. As Can I babe? And, nice <laughs> and there's, a, there's a thing with bodybuilders where, I don't know if you've seen lines on bodybuilders when they get these really pronounced yeah, yeah. lines and people are saying it's steroid juice, it's yeah. the liver's failing. They're looking at it now and saying it's potentially the, the CPAP. Yeah, use of CPAP. Because piece. it's just the crease of, yeah, of yeah, just yeah. constant eight, eight, nine hours every single day. And the reason bodybuilders will do that is because it stops you from snoring completely. And yeah. if you're snoring, it worsens. You're your not efficient in oxygen yeah. intake. So Exactly. Yeah. I take my mouth up when I go to sleep. I'm working on sleeping with my nose because I, I find it difficult. Do it, man. But I I've, do I've think it's a training like thing. Yeah, I need to work on that myself because just, just do it. Yeah, I'm a mouth breather and I'm gonna start evolving. No, just do I've, it. I've had it I've had it for a month and the feedback I got from her was she was saying you're taking this off every night after about two hours. I just take it off in my sleep. Yeah, yeah. Just politely it's, just it's, undo it's, it. It's, pop it on top of the machine. Um, you'll do it'll be um not subconscious, it'll be You'll just do it. Yeah, it's, a, it's an unconscious reflex. It's just when I first when I first started mouth taping, I was the same. But it's I'd be like, I'd, I'd go right. You actually night. tape in your mouth and you sleep, yeah? Yeah, I've, but for two years, three. I'll years try now. this, but if you don't hear from me tomorrow, mm, that yeah. is man's hey, man slaughter. Where's Tiger? At least. <laughs> yeah, but so when I first started, I'd take my mouth shut and I'd wake up and it would be like on the pillow or something. Ah. And Amy would be like, "Why? Why do you keep fucking doing this?" <laughs> when I first said, it's good, I said like similar to you, I was like, "Right, babe." <laughs> You know when we go to bed tonight, <laughs> and she's like, "Yeah." It's like, "I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tape my mouth shut." And she's like, "You're gonna do fucking what?" Like, I'm gonna because it's gonna help me. And she's just like, "I don't want to know." I'm not looking at you. I don't want to know. And now it's like that. Good night, babe. <laughs> 
fucking brilliant. <laughs> life, <laughs> life for Danny. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. That's why you're clean shaven to keep like, the proper suction yeah. seal. Because like, I know what I, I, yeah. that's what they tell you. To we do. have an issue. They, yeah, they yeah. You, they tell you to shave it down. Like they There's talk, too many risks, Rich. You got to get rid of this CPAP. You can't risk the beard. The beard. Yeah, man. It's a, it's a, she said to me, "You've got to get it all off." I was like, "Do you know how ming I am without this?" Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. She's like, "Okay, keep it very, very short, and maybe use Vaseline." Vaseline I'm like, yeah, yeah, that'll be right. Yeah, I've got Vaseline. Next, next to a girl <laughs> I've just met, just one second, yeah. man, I've just got Vaseline up around Can you I and be? pop the mask on. It is mad. Where have you it gone? Make, it uh, makes noise hello? as well. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> As you as you breathe, and I'm looking at this girl, I'm never going to see yeah, her again. And this is an There's alternative no for a lot Text of people, as day. opposed to lose the weight, diet training, just yeah. lose the weight. It is insane having little, you know, medical experience that I do have, and experience in patients and mm -hmm. things. What people are willing to do, mm -hmm. as opposed to take responsibility for their own health. Literally it's anything crazy. else other than yeah. diet. I'll inject have this, you, that, whatever. Have you, have you uh, hear me out? Have you tried losing a few pounds? <gasps> oh no, it's nothing to do with that. Oh, all right, I've no got problem. a slow metabolism. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've tried everything. For a start. Oh, have you? Of course you have. Of course thyroid you have. issues? Yeah. Have you tried doing the work? Uh, you know, the thyroid issues are hilarious. Mm. Obviously, it's not the best thing to say, but because one, mm. they're fixable by me medication, yeah. mm. levothyroxine most of the time. So then you're back mm. to normal, just so people know. Mm. If you have a thyroid issue and you take something to boost your thyroid back to where it should be, mm. you, can't, you can't say that to someone who's on thyroid medication because they go, that's not right. You like, are now you normal. tell me why you're taking thyroid yeah. medication? We can measure it in the blood. It's yeah. literally a measurable thing. Mm. You know, mm. it's literally measurable. And that's the, that's the crazy thing about it, isn't it? It's well. It, so with with this, I, one of the things that I wondered because the it was the physiotherapist who eventually said yes. As far as I know, if you lost a, a good chunk of weight inside of a year, we could retest you and you wouldn't have sleep apnea anymore. And I'm like, so I'd be the same human being who's Googling, I'm going to die in eight years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're saying in 12 months time, what's the what's the ultra intrusive, super painful surgery that I have to go through? And this is wiped out. Lose seven kilos, 10 yeah. kilos, something okay. like that. And you'd probably get ripped in the process and have a mm. brilliant time. And, or and, we could cut your tongue off. Hmm. And all and all this stuff, the recovery is like, just the nose one. Yeah, she said, I we'd start with nose. No. It's a month long start of recovery and you can't train because of the, uh, if you if you lift weights, the pressure yeah, you build yeah, yeah, up can yeah. pop your nose and yeah. make you bleed. I was like, and then you wonder how governments end up napalm in Vietnam. Like that's mm. how you get to them levels, mm. isn't it? Mm. You know, instead of doing certain things, simple things, mm. let's just do the craziest yeah, yeah, yeah. outcome. The let's just do something that just covers it all. So I'm, I'm current, I like, I'm, a, I think I said to you in the gym, I said I'm at 101 kilograms. So it's quite- You're easy. looking bigger. I did think that. So it's yeah. convenient that you've got this issue. And it's, it's 11 kilos heavier get, than me. Yes. Cause you were getting coached, wasn't you? You still getting coached doing the, the muscle gain stuff? Uh, with with Ant without no no I I retired from that because I was wasting his time over. I I just I I couldn't do what he was asking me to but do but it's interesting this has come up has this come about obviously you've been thrown a long time because most I'm, men do but I think I'd got to a certain point of of muscularity or weight where it got worse. So it's correlating with it's the game. It's correlating yeah, yeah. because yeah, when yeah, I first yeah. found out and I was doing all this walking and not sleeping, I dropped five kilos and things improved. Like my breathing improved, my health improved, everything improved. My problem is, uh, is, is travel. So in terms of, for me to lose weight, I have to cook for myself. Yeah. I can't do it and, and eat in restaurants and stuff. It mm -hmm. just, it's, it's never worked for me. Yeah. So I have to be in one place. Um, so when I go back to Dubai, I'll get an apartment and I'll just be, I'll just be cooking yeah. for myself. And I don't, I don't particularly mind it. I don't mind. Like if you say to me, I'll do a bit more cardio. Well, I like doing a bit, yeah, yeah. bit of kickboxing yeah, and that, yeah, yeah. eat healthy. I don't really miss, I'm quite happy with chicken and veg and stuff. I'm not, mm -hmm. don't get cravings for other stuff. And inside of, I don't even think it'll take me a year. I think in six not months, lose seven not kilos. even a chance, Rich. Six, 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 six months. months tops. Depends, yeah. Well, it depends how hard you hit it, but you could lose well, seven the kilos. The last time we were in, we were out in Ibiza together. I was I was walking around at ninety one kilos. Mm. Going dieting hard. Ninety one. So you're nine kilos difference. I'm nine kilos difference. That's I'm, life changing. I'm, I'm five foot nine. Yeah, that's like one hundred and one kilograms at five foot nine is probably a bit too heavy. <laughs> I'm one hundred and twelve at five foot nine. Oh no! Are you one hundred and twelve? Yeah. Fuck it up. But, but you don't you don't have sleep apnea, you don't have these I definitely will snore. Yeah. Um I have had sleep apnea. I have I had issues where I'd wake up doing that, but that was yeah. literally when I was doing a dirty bulk when I was 21. Mm. So six years ago. Mm. And I was I did four pa uh, pasties from Pound Bakery and mm. then had a nap after it and it didn't go down well. No. <laughs> um <laughs> no. Yeah. Good old dirty bulk. We've all bulk. we've all got our we've got a story. Good old dirty bulk. Yeah, I was what bad for that fuck? man. 
Because uh, they, well, no, which one was it? It was the British Journal of Anesthesia tells me that 90% of people with apnea probably are undiagnosed. Yeah. It damages the hippocampus and the frontal cortex structure, can potentially do it. Uh, because we can have recurrent hypoxic stress from apnea, it can trigger small strokes. The accumulative effect over your lifetime can be dementia. So we don't know. 100%, uh, yeah. With, yeah. Bo with bodybuilders and anabolic steroid users, yep. we might see a lot of dementia lo mm -hmm. uh, later on. There are studies that show there is a positive correlation just with steroid use. Never mind the body weight, just steroids yeah, can yeah. bring on apnea. Infl infl inflammation, most likely, yeah. Probably inflammation. Um and it's fairly, it's not cheap. It costs about 200 quid and they send out the equipment from to you from a sleep. You don't have to sleep in the clinic. You wear something on your finger, you stick something to your chest and they, they measure you for eight hours. Did you sleep in a clinic, by the way? No, I didn't. That's I so didn't. interesting. Yeah, no, I had them send it out to We me. were talking about the body MOT, like I'm pushing yeah. for this stuff. Like how good would it be is every single year? Yeah. I think people should pay for it. It shouldn't be free. Yeah. You went and did a sleep test. You yeah. went and did a heart test. Yes. You did ECG. Yeah. Imagine that, how healthy we'd be. I, I, I think I've... Now that I know about sleep apnea, I, I don't want to become like a sleep apnea bore, but I have, I've, I've said to a few people, the thing to start with is there's a free app called Snore Lab. Snore Lab, yeah, Snore yeah. Snore yeah. Lab. If you get a score of over 75, over three nights on Snore Lab, pay for a, a sleep clinic test and find out if you have apnea. Because if you do have severe apnea, it, it, it can fucking kill you. Yeah. So yeah. Heart attacks, strokes, yeah. dementia, the whole 100%. thing. It's well worth getting yeah. looked at. Snore lab or girlfriend. Girlfriend. Very reliable yeah, yeah, yeah. test. Well, um, I know I had girlfriends for years who just let me uh, not breathe. Let you and die. And not telling me. <laughs> so I went back. I was like, I need to know if this is a weight issue. I can track my weight gain, weight loss. I went back to different girlfriends, called them or texted them. I was like, was I stopping sleeping? Yes, you were uh, not sleeping. You were uh, <laughs> ceasing to breathe. <laughs> Many times. I'm like, <laughs> and you didn't tell yeah. me. No, I thought just... you knew it, that you are not breathing. I'm like, I'm a fucking sleep. <laughs> I can't possibly know. Imagine you sat with a bird and she's just like. <sighs> yeah, well, I think I would tell I was going to say, do you have the statistics of females that have sleep apnea? Because I'd massively wager bet it's way less. It's way less. It's probably body weight related it's... Or, or how men live their lives. So in women... Uh, pre-menopause, it's way, way less than men. Post-menopause, it's starting to equalize. If the man has 17 inches for his neck, that's the that's the strongest indicator that he's going to have apnea. And if a woman is 16 inches or above, yep. she's going to get And how men and women gain weight is relatively different. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's probably down to that. Yeah. It didn't say that. When I was looking at the study, it went, oh, post-menopause, it's worse than women. And I was like, could you maybe just give me a little more data? Like, <laughs> is it because they are... Could, could, is it because they're fatter? I mean, it's... <laughs> I just want... It's science. Could, I, I, need to, I need to know. Well, like, is it because they're fatter? Can't say it's science. Yeah, women with <laughs> post-menopause... Science is racist. It's science. <laughs> Sorry, mate. What well, you women with post-menopause, I'm not an expert on that, but mm. their hormone shift is massive. Yeah, huge. Progesterone, whether it's progesterone, estradiol, whatever. And that can probably be a reason for body composition change, you know, whether that's less muscular and now more high body fat, smaller bone density. So the neck might widen for that reason. I don't know. Because you're meant to supplement stuff in, in, in menopause, really, post-menopause. You're meant to supplement stuff post-menopause. You're meant to have your hormones checked and you're mm -hmm. meant to have them monitored. And if you need progesterone and estrogen, which most women do, you need to be doing that. I think so, a lot of them are scared of it. Or testosterone. I mean, yeah. Scared of it. Yeah. Because it, was it, not, not now, but years ago, um, HRT was linked to certain health issues, wasn't it? In females? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. Mean, so I think a lot of women now, or not, well, I've spoke to a lot of women like, oh, I don't really want to go on HRT. Like, fucking it's why? It's crazy that, isn't it, really? Males why? as well, the male stigma oh, still exists. Yeah. Jesus. Um, if, if, if you don't want this to be mansplained to you, there is a good, I can't remember the name of the podcast, but if you put in um, Estrogen Danger Podcast yeah. into YouTube, there's a group of, uh, female American doctors who are trying to bang the drum of how dangerous it is for women. I know the podcast to, and it's a good one, yeah. Yeah, to have their estrogen level. And they talk about how it's bad yeah. for men. They basically say estrogen is not good for you. Yeah. It's very dangerous. Mm. And we all, especially as you age, have to work harder to control it. They give all of the natural ways of doing it, you know, eating cruciferous vegetables and weight training and all that. And they say, they say you need supplementation. HRT to deal with the is just hormone replacement mm -hmm. therapy. Yeah, I don't yeah. know where people get the idea that it's hormone enhancement or no. mm. I want to become a superhuman. It's mm. just taking what you already yeah, had yeah. 
and putting it back What's in. It's naturally declined. That's all it is. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what research exactly is. I said it was bad, but I mean, there's so many, there's so many. Um, mm. I think it was linked. I can't remember off the top problems, of my head. Problems, isn't it? It was linked to certain diseases or linked to, it was linked to something that was pretty severe, but how strong the link was. Yeah. Who knows? You've, you've done more work on, uh, and research on the menopause. What what is the effect that would lead to a higher body fat composition? And um, I've not looked into this for about was your thing a while ago, about years. five six yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I was I was really really into it. Um, when I was coaching, I was coaching purely coaching women. It was I was really into it, but yeah. I've not read up on it for for yeah. a long time. And, but but it's like like Tyler said, it's it's the the, the hormonal shift. Yeah, um, it affects your metabolism it affects your appetite it's testosterone it's, levels it's, it's, as well it's a big for females deal. It's and a big deal so it goes down yeah yeah testosterone levels drop you want to replace them for females 15 to 30 milligrams a week typically for, forgive my ignorance what's a normal age for female menopause i normal yeah. you see a lot now i don't know if it's modern society it varies, there's a lot of people yeah. who have an early onset menopause what what did it used to be what was the standard age i can't remember if it's happened yet so so if the testosterone levels are going down would that mean uh, it would make training less enjoyable. Same problems as men, smaller mm. bones, more brittle bones, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, less muscle mass, more likely to gain body fat. And what Can't about, hold muscle in your heart as well. What about psychology? Does it give you less motivation well, that, to train? Well, that's where the estrogen drive? becomes a problem because mm -hmm. the difference between the two tends to be what then determines your psychological state, mm -hmm. insecurity, lack of confidence, paranoia. That's why men tend to be more suicidal at the age of 35 and 40, and that's where it peaks. Because as males' testosterone declines, mm. we see the correlation in suicidal thoughts, insecurity, low confidence, low self-esteem. Mm. goes hand in hand with heart disease because you have low testosterone. You can no longer keep your heart sufficiently healthy. And that's why, because the age where we see those testosterone declines, we but see But then when you go to the doctors, they won't treat you for low testosterone. They'll give you an antidepressant. Yeah. Because, Most of, likely, because yeah. the symptoms are um, massively similar. Are, are the same. They're yeah. treating uh, symptoms, not causes. Mm -hmm. Us bodybuilders being idiots has done great things in a weird way. Yeah. Because we've experimented and gone, because I've had ridiculously high estrogen levels and I've went, wow. Yeah. Oh, it's not nice. It helps me with, yeah. uh, with, with, with my partner as well. Because I'm like, yeah. I know what it's like mm -hmm. when you have these shifts. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I can understand you how can have, ridiculous. You can have empathy, yeah, have when, empathy when your estrogen levels are 100%. off. It's Super crazy. emotional. You're paranoid. Yeah. You're insecure. Yeah. You know, you, you feel like people, you're, you're needy. You're needy. Yeah. I want more I just want reassurance. <laughs> I just need reassurance. Me. <laughs> <laughs> but it, But I've got the empathy for that because I've, I've lived it. it and I've, yeah. and, I'm, and that's why I know men as well. And I campaign heavily for men because I'm like, People that are 35 foot going, I just don't feel good anymore. I'm going, let's get a blood test, which by the way, why doctors aren't doing this quarterly, mm. yearly, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. is mm. insane. Mm. The blood test shows, there you have it. Super low testosterone, high estrogen, high prolactin, mm. disaster. It's, it's that's a disaster. No libido, no energy, no fire in you. Nothing. No motivation. Nothing. No, but that's depression. You aren't fighting apparently. that. And then that's depression, yeah. I'm telling you. Well, isn't it? So allow me to put on my little feminist hat. It's Ooh, a tiny, do. tiny feminist hat. Isn't it a bit... Then, like, given what we just said, like, come to men in a second. Say for women, middle-aged women, premenopausal, postmenopausal, it's a bit brutal to then just say, right, get your trackies on, let's get you in the gym, without looking at bloods, mm -hmm. without looking at hormones, mm -hmm. without anything. Yeah, yeah. If they, if you don't feel good anyway, your body image isn't great, yeah. your your uh, moods are not fantastic, you're a little bit paranoid and insecure. I would just say. There you go. Well, get, I agree with you. If, get, get in the gym. if you take your health seriously, <laughs> yeah. get a blood test. Yeah. yeah. This now, is, this more than ever, we've got availability for this. The stuff that you're doing at the yeah. moment is incredible. You go to the doctors, not slagging doctors off. You go to the doctors. They've only got 10 minutes. Yeah. Five, yeah. five or 10 minutes. Yeah, they've yeah. got a waiting room full of people. Yeah. They've been on shift for, for 10 hours already. Mm. You go in there. You, all you can do is give them a brief description of what's going on. They can just go, oh, well, it sounds like this. Mm. Yeah. Whereas if you go to if you do what you what the some of the yeah. stuff that you do you get a, f a full blood panel and you get you get an interview you get a discussion with an expert who can go yeah. well it looks like it's this that and the other let's try this and it's based on evidence and mm -hmm. it's about incorporating yeah. the individual 100%. when I get your bloods done and you look at them with with an expert and they say here are your bloods with females especially mm. here's your bloods here's your estrogen here's everything you run it down with them mm. and then they now understand their own yeah internal hematology and then you fix it with medications and you then come back in 12 weeks and go here's what the medication done mm. here is the this is where this it's is at proof and mm. that for me is is the bit yeah. we're missing yeah because antidepressants i don't know rich how do you measure them 
Is it an anecdotal thing? Do you go, I feel better now? Like, That's what, they, it's what self-reported. It? It's purely self-reported. Well, for me, though. if your bloods aren't great, you yeah. shouldn't be touching anything else. Nope. So, uh, okay, we're crossing over here. So before antidepressants are considered, we should look at bloods and yeah. then- 100%. Yeah. And we should look at body- Body, body uh, fat composition. Body fat, how you look, for sure, man. You may, you, you, I mean, we have to go there because- We do. Look, we've already said it on another bo- podcast, being too heavy- is going to stress your body. Yeah, yeah. It's going to stress you psychologically. It's going to stress you physically. If you're physically stressed, you're psychologically stressed. If your sleep is damaged, I mean, mm-hmm. you've done tons of work on yeah, this yeah. damaged sleep and yeah. what it does to your motivation, everything else, yeah. and to your hormone levels. Yeah, 100%. yeah. Bat- bat- 100%. And then fat. What, you know, it is not good to be fat. Do you know what loves body fat in yeah. men and women? Estrogen. Yeah. Estrogen, yeah. Loves it. Yeah. And in a high body fat environment, estrogen thrives. Estrogen's there, yeah. Yeah. So if you're already in that bad predicament, it's going to get way worse. Mm-hmm. Now, if you were simple-minded and didn't understand endocrinology, you would think testosterone is the male hormone, estrogen is the female hormone. Here's three men slagging off estrogen. So in a way, it's like slagging off women. It is dangerous for everybody. It reduces yeah, fertility. It, yeah. it damages your moods. Mm-hmm. It, you, you need estrogen for, for strong bones, for yep. perfect brain function, for yep. muscle mass. It's very important. Yep. But the, the balance of estrogen, the testosterone, and, and all those, they need to be monitored yep. by someone who knows what they're doing. Okay. I couldn't just say to anyone, hey, this is where it should be, but you need to be monitored by someone who knows what they're doing. And I'm not, I've got nothing against people who are out of shape. You do whatever you want. You can call me a big stupid meathead. I don't really mind. But, but if you care about your health, it's important. And it's not about like, oh, there's, there's, there's three men and they're talking about this, but we're saying everybody should get a, a blood test. Well, if you have yeah, yeah, depression, yeah. if you have anxiety, yeah. get your blood checked. And the women yeah. that have done 100%. it with are massively grateful when you yeah. explain it to them. And and then it's uh, it might be mansplaining, but to me, in the experience I've had, they mm. love it. They, yeah. they like seeing the blood <laughs> go and get oh. paid and I'll mansplain yeah. this yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. They, I'm not, you know, it's there. I found it a tremendous uh, psychological relief when the doctor said to me, I was like, I've, I, ha- I now have severe anxiety. And she was like, you don't. It's brain hypoxia. Mm-hmm. That's when great. we fix this, there's no anxiety. I was like, fuck, thank fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I'm not, I'm not anxious all of a sudden. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that bad? It, it, well, well done, doc. Yeah. Placebo, you don't have depression. Placebo's you have three M nola testosterone. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we can fix this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Congrats. There's a fix. Sadly, in England, it's a little slow. But in places like America and, and other places, it's, it's it's quick now. And well, the, there was a brutality. I said that like you take like uh, middle aged man, middle aged woman. These are the problems they've got, and you just throw them in the gym. There's also that's the that's the phys- that's the fitness side of what you guys do. There's a brutality to what we do. So okay, here's some cognitive behavioral therapy. Just tell yourself you're wonderful, or mm. let's talk about your childhood <laughs> trauma that makes yeah. you feel like shit. Yeah, I genuinely believed I developed anxiety because of like a midlife crisis and an encroaching fear of death that I'd pushed to one side. And I, I psychologized the whole thing. And the doctor's like, your brain doesn't have enough oxygen and you're freaking out. And I was mm. like, okay, that's the end of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's physical. Mm-hmm. I wonder how much of the stuff that we psychologize is actually in the body. Mm-hmm. There's actually physical fixes for these that's things. That's my belief anyway, because we say go to the gym and it's not because you're going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger or, you know, the female equivalent. That's mm-hmm. not necessarily what fixes you. Mm. What fixes you is training with weight is going to improve bone density. Not only that, it's going to build muscle. And then what's muscle going to do? It's going to improve your testosterone level, mm-hmm. improve your IGF levels. It's going to lower your body fat. And what do we say about estrogen? It's going to reduce that mm-hmm. estrogen-like environment. It's not just get in the gym, lift some weights and look good. Have a massive a set deep, of traps. Yeah, yeah, deep yeah. hormonal reason that we um, we do these things. So it's deeper than that. Danny mentioned uh, the project that you're working on at the moment. What what is it that you're working on right now? Yeah. So what I've luckily got involved in uh, in America, especially they've they've seen this stuff coming. America's always well ahead. Yeah. Um, they've been looking into this stuff. I find Americans are a little bit more uh, willing to invest in their own health now. And forward thinking. Yeah, they're forward thinking, I believe. And they're willing to invest in their own health. Now, TRT, Joe Rogan spoke about it years back. And now mm. over there, you've got people like Elon Musk doing, you know, a Zempic, which is semaglutide. That just took off in the UK. And they're doing things like peptides and testosterone and everything like that. They, they don't want to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm. They want to extend and prolong their life mm-hmm. and its quality. Mm-hmm. So I've been involved in a company. It's called The Health Guys. And we basically bring people in, blood tests. We have a panel of experts look at it. Doctors are backing it. Everything's prescription, pharmaceutically made, FDA approved. Mm. And the bloods are being looked at. And then they're getting on protocols. They're going to help them prolong their life in many different areas. Now, is this only of benefit to people who live in America? Yeah, okay. because in England, we have things called research peptides. You're not going to get testosterone from the doctor in England, mm-hmm. sadly. And America is the only place that are currently in that space right now. So if somebody's living in America and they want to benefit from this, what was the name of the website? The, he- the Health Guys. The Health, the health guys. guys. Yeah, thehealthguys.com. And they get a full consultation yep, from you. full consultation. And-, and one of our big promises is that in American 
pharmacology, as most people know, price gouging is ridiculous. So mm -hmm. you will see peptides, hormone replacements, been very much a thing for the rich and wealthy, mm. whether it's Sylvester Stallone taking growth hormones to Australia, like they've been doing it for 20 years, but it's been mm. very expensive. And the guys involved in the company realized it's not that expensive, mm. or at least it's cheaper. So we're kind of going for the approach of saving everybody with this, making it like your average Joe on the street can go, I'm not feeling great, you know, mm. I'll go to the health guys, get a blood mm -hmm. test, see mm -hmm. what's happening. It's not voodoo. Mm. It's not like, oh, you're looking a bit fat, bro. It's that. It is, let's do your bloods and assess from there. Yeah, and then okay. based on that protocol, we then encourage certain practices prescribed by doctors, backed by doctors. You return in 12 weeks, we see the result, and then we talk to you about what's happening and how you're doing. And it's changing lives massively. Man and woman, by the way, postmenopausal, yeah. pre whatever, man and woman, everyone's lives are being changed by this. So it's huge. And the, re the reason for them needing to be in America is because they can actually get what they need pharmaceuticals. Yeah, because yeah. America for whatever flaws you might see in its medical system, mm. in a weird way, also has many benefits that it will let people get what they want to get. Yeah, yeah. You know, as long as it's FDA approved and made in American facilities, it's available and people can buy it. Is it, is it elite, the difference between America and the UK in that regard? Is that like a mentality or do you think the, the legal system there is just more open to I would, this? Or? I would love to know. Some people would say it's money, mm. but I don't know. I, I think American as people know what they want. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you speak to an do, expert- they'll, They're willing to do yeah. what it takes to get it as well. If you speak mm -hmm. to an expert and yeah. they say, listen mate, your testosterone's low. And they go, what? Mm -hmm. And then you tell them what low testosterone does. Mm -hmm. They'd get their AR-15, they'd be straight to the doctor going, why aren't you prescribing yeah. me shit, man? This is going to kill me. <laughs> British people are like, oh, I'm just going to die then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'll just go to the chippy. I'm just going to have to die. Great, you know. <laughs> Americans ain't taking that shit. No. They're getting. They're, they're going to go, no. sell us it. Yeah. Or, yeah. or we else? ain't happy. <laughs> and that's what I love about it because I think they're great. And then it will leak to England, it will. Because I know guys on a personal level who ask me for advice who are working with doctors in England that are getting testosterone. It just takes a long time. So we... And here it's not legal for us to get pharmaceutical products no. from, from the UK, no. uh, from USA. No, they can't no. be sent over now. They can't be sent there's, over there's, there's different um There's different guidelines and different... Yeah. It's, com just com it's, it's the same with supplements, isn't it? Yeah. You, some, some in, in Canada, some supplements are illegal in America, and in America, some supplements... So it's the, it's the, it's the yeah. same kind of we thing. We can't there's even help Canadians. There's just different yeah. regulations everywhere, isn't there? Yeah. Ephedrine's one, isn't it? You saw it used to be okay in Canada, and I don't Jeez. know if it still is. It's okay in Canada. Ephedrine was like a normal. Oh, the normal put that yeah. in a fat burner. I was yeah, taking yeah, Ephedrine yeah. when I was twenty-two in an ECA mm -hmm. stack, and it was mm -hmm. a great fat burner. Yeah, turned out to be a class A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've been, I've been I on meth. I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> Scary, isn't it? Really, when you think, oh yeah, this this nice innocent little supplement. Yeah, I bought caffeine, aspirin, and ephedrine. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, this is great, vasodilator. It's going to help with thin out blood, give me a good pump, give me focus, energy. And, and I loved it. And then obviously yeah. it's a class A drug, ephedrine. Why, why did they ban it in America? Ephedrine? Yeah. Because it was it was legal for a while, wasn't I think it, it was just yeah. like, you know, MCAT. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a herbal supplement, It's okay wasn't it? for a while until it starts killing people. And yeah. Then, and we used to take ephedrine, didn't we, on the, on the door in the living room? We did, yeah. We'd have a few jelly babies, yeah, yeah, yeah. a few ephedrines, ephedrine, and then just yeah. chat, chat nonsense yeah. on the living room door, oh, yeah. God, I feel a bit tired. Do you want, do you want an ephedrine? I literally oh, had yeah, a bag. Yeah, bag of ephedrine, <laughs> bag yeah. Of ephedrine. Of ephedrine? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a full blown class A now. I it's think no it's no It is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was absolutely. It's, it's it was weird divine. how easily you fall into these cracks because you know, you know, yeah. you'll get people that are doing testosterone one minute in the UK, mm. and then they'll they'll have a diazepam, and then then they're breaching all sorts mm -hmm. of different. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. they're breaking well through many doors. What's it uh, that you're working on at the moment, Mister Danny? Working on. Mm. What's your main project right now? So what I'm what I've got going on at the moment, I've got a. Uh, women's only, ladies only, female only mm -hmm. coaching transformation program, which is going incredibly well mm -hmm. because I look at things. I don't know if you've realized this. Mm -hmm. I look at things a little bit uh, differently to other people. <laughs> yes, you do. So instead of just looking at the food, we look at why they get overwhelmed by diets, why they continue to self-sabotage, why they do this, why do they do that? Look at their identity, look at the labels that they give themselves. So it works incredibly well because it's different. Mm. Because it's not just, well, why aren't you eating this? It's, it's going really, really well, yeah. And I really, really enjoy it. I never thought I'd enjoy, because I've, I've been through phases where I've coached women and then I've coached men. Mm. And now I've gone back to coaching. I've got, a, I've got a, a few men that I coach, but I actually enjoy coaching women a lot more, which I never, ever thought I'd say. Mm. Because they, they actually 
do it. I mean, we, we women are so much more coachable. Spoke, Shout out to women, before, by the way. Yeah. We, mm-hmm. about, um, women are better. About taking responsibility. Men will always, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, no, I, I see what you're saying there, Danny, but can I just say, they, they're always trying to validate what they're doing, whereas women mm-hmm. will just go, oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. I'd give them, uh, I had a coaching call with them all last night. I'm all about responsibility. Mm. So I give them an exercise. I just give them a little bit of homework. And I said, right, get a pen, get a piece of paper. It's going to hurt. Yeah, you're going to have to be honest, but literally write down what part am I playing in my own suffering and then just sit with it. Yeah. Write down the answers, be vivid, be, just, be, just give it as much detail as you possibly can. And then ask yourself, why do I continue, continue doing it? I give them that last night and I said, if you want to, if you want to post in the group, mm. post in the group. And today there's just been so many fucking incredible answers of, of just women going, shit. Mm. I know, I know what it is now. I've written it down because when you, when you keep something in your brain, you can kind of hide from it a little bit. Yeah. But when you write it down, it comes into reality. So I give them this exercise last night and they're just all the comments, all the posts, they're all taking pictures of the, of the writing they were doing last night. It's just amazing because they're, it's just like light bulbs going off. Oh my God. Mm. I can't believe. So that's why I've been trying to lose 20, 30 pounds for all this time. And now I've got clear on this is exactly what I'm doing. Mm. I know what and I know how to get around it. So I'm really, really enjoying it. It's going, it's going really, really well. That's cool. That's very cool. Why is it easier to coach women than men? Because so much easier, yeah, isn't it? Because they, they you've got the the masculine and the feminine, haven't you? The masculine is problem solving and I've got all the answers. Yeah. Whereas the feminine is is more they're, they're more receptive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, you say to a man, uh, I think that you, you should probably maybe look at doing this, you know, and they go, nah. Men don't have the answers, do don't they? Yeah, they do, all of them, I've, and they're all wrong. I coach 95% men now, but mm. I did a few years yeah. as a group class instructor for, for females, and they are yeah. great because they're willing to learn. Mm. They're not, they've got no ego. They've got no, well, you know, I used to train with this fella and I've done yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do this myself. Like men are very much, and that's to our own detriment, mm. I think in many areas of life, we think yeah. we have the answers and then, Lo and behold, we find out the hard way that we don't have the answers. That we're dying of something rapidly. Yes. <laughs> that we're not sleeping. We tend to ask for help when we're dying. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's the problem that, that, with that's us. That's a good point. Yeah. I, I say this to men all the time. You, you continue to live your life. You are further on than you believe. And it takes something serious happening. Yeah. I've got, lo- I've got loads of mates who it takes something serious happening. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Richard. It takes something serious happening I before don't you need change advice. the ways, right? I'm a fucking world-class Listen, psychologist. I, I know everything there is to know about everything. I know I have the answers, but men, it takes the doctor or it takes someone yeah. to go, sit down, kid. You're going to die in a few years if you don't do this. And then they go, oh my God, why didn't I do this years ago? And you're like, ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got told off uh, twice in one week by two female doctors saying mm. the same thing. So the first one said, after she saw the state of my nose and she was like, can you breathe? I was like, oh, it's okay. And she was like, it's, it's not okay, is it? It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> How's it's British? Fine. fine. Everything's fine. She's like, it's not fucking fine because I can't get yeah. into your nose. Yeah. It's closed. And she was like, what did she say to me? She said, um, she's she's really, she's quite posh. She was like, you don't complain much, do you? And I went, no. She's like, hmm, sometimes you'll need to learn to ask for a little bit more help. You probably should have been asking for help with this a few years Shut ago. Shut up, you. I was like, what? How dare? I did have multiple girlfriends tell me for the last three years I have to go to a doctor and I just wouldn't go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know why. We are bad. I just I've don't want to go. Because there's nothing wrong with us. I'm fat. Weak people go to the doctor. I'm fine, fat who darling. Goes. Sick people. Yes. With the weak. Yes. They waste the doctor's time. Five days later, the other doctor says to me, um, so we got the results back of your sleep study. Um, do you ever get headaches? Nope. Do you ever feel sleep? <laughs> Headache? <laughs> nope. Do you ever feel sleepy With during the day? Wrong, it's too bright. Oh, God. <laughs> so, do you ever get sleepy during the day? No, nope, absolutely not. <laughs> so, so you don't you don't need to nap during the day? No. Nope. It reminds like, me of the Monty Python Black Knight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a flesh wound. Just yeah, yeah, a yeah, yeah. arms. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, "Okay, so I'm looking at your results here, and Mr. Grannon, you need to inform the DVLA that you are actually not to drive for more than uh, two hours at a time." I was like, oh. You tell them. I was like, Pardon? <laughs> she said, you have to actually declare legally to the DVLA that, that you have severe sleep apnea. And have you're you not, just blown yourself up on? You're not. I've already done it. I've already told them. <sighs> and then I go back. Like, I then have to wait for, uh, you use your CPAP for a certain amount of time. And if you use it for more than four hours a night, 
for more than a month. You go, it's like being at school again, this. I go back to teacher, they check me again, and then they tell me. Give I'm you a little gold star. I get a gold, gold star. I'm wearing my, my breathy, breathy mask at night time, <laughs> every night. And then I'm allowed to sell the DVLA. I'm fine again. But they both said, mm. like, you have to ask. Yeah, you, you've, you've got to ask for help more. But yeah. I just thought, I don't know, it just got it stuck into my head that, like, unless something is literally dropping off, yeah. I don't need to ask for help. Yeah. And sadly, you know, the, the, this is a funny one about heart disease and mm. men is mainly who it affects. Mm. It's the, the biggest symptom, the first sign of heart disease is a heart attack. It's not the greatest symptom no, to no, be experiencing. No. And no, that it's is fairly problem. clear. Though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, How did you know you had a problem? Well, I was dead. I died. <laughs> I've seen, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. They go, well, you know, how do you know you got heart disease, mate? I had a heart attack, you yeah. know. It's just extreme. I'm all right now, yeah. though. And even then, I think some of them go, what, do you know what? Bit of indigestion that, you know, they just had a full bone heart attack. Yeah, it yeah, does yeah. happen. Uh, the thing that I'm not sure with is, and I, I, I will I, I will go to, I, I think like at the, at the age I'm at, I'm, and I can afford to, I will just start regularly going like every six months. And just, This is just why it should be legal out. practice though, because you you know that now and, 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 and all of us should, but I think there should be a force in place where you are told, here's your yearly checkup. And, and here, here's the argument for that, which is they're saying 90% of people with sleep apnea don't know. And that means uh, that of that 90%, many people are operating machinery and driving trucks and flying planes yep. and driving cars. And, and they don't yeah, know. Fine, that is yeah. That. They don't, it, <laughs> they don't know that they're, they're actually falling asleep. They're, uh, what did you call it? Uh, they're going into like the psychosis. Dreaming while they're awake. Dreaming yeah, awake. Yeah, dreaming yeah, awake. Delirium tremors. They're, 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 getting, they're, they're falling into delirium whilst we're sharing the motorway with them at 80 miles an hour yeah. and essentially a weapon made of steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they don't mean it. No, It's just no, that ego no. of like, ah, oh, I'm all right. Yeah, okay. Everyone snores. Yeah, everyone does. But yeah, really, yeah, yeah. reality is that's what snoring becomes. Yeah. Yes. That that's, noise supposed, is a problem. You're not supposed to snore. Yeah. yeah. That snoring noise is, is the sign. It's mad, isn't it? Because snoring on cartoons, all cartoon characters snore. And it's like, oh, must be in a deep sleep. You're not. You're not, Man in, ain't a deep, you're not in a deep sleep at all. <laughs> Well, that, and that, that, so snoring alone, I think people need to know that's actually pulling you out of REM sleep, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So when you're snoring, you're not, you, you spend more time in light sleep. Right. So you've got light sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep. When you're snoring, you're just not, you're just on the, you're on the cusp. You're not even properly asleep. Yeah. You're on the cusp of being asleep. So that you, so that that's why people wake up in the morning, like, my God, I've been in bed for nine hours and I'm absolutely fucked. It's like, yeah. you've been in bed for nine hours, but you've been snoring like a fucking warthog for seven of them. Yeah. So you've not, you've not had any sleep. I'm offended. <laughs> wasn't, These wasn't are a warthog. very, very hurtful words. These really. hate which they could deep. The bodybuilding community will yeah, answer this. They will, yeah. Again. So I, I am, um, I've decided to be a, a fitness influencer. I'm not in particularly good shape. I'm not particularly strong. Um, You'll do well. I'm sort of, I'm not particularly fat, not particularly thin, rather an average. Can you sell? I can sell. You're in. <laughs> how, many people the fitness can, industry. how many people can you DM today? When I am outside of your industry and I look in through the window, as I do when I'm in the gymnasium, <laughs> in various countries, in different places, and I see people and then they're, they're on the TV screen that's in the gym and it's like, oh, you can get a lesson with this person. I'm looking at what they're doing with a client. And then I look at them and I look at that. I do wonder sometimes, I have my less charitable moments. <laughs> Why the fuck would anybody pay to train with you? You're not in good shape. You're not incredibly strong. There's nothing really going on here. Where are the standards in your fucking industry? There are, there, I don't think there are any. Well, there, there's no... There's no regulatory body. No. And a lot of people are asking for one. Mm. Right. Um, but I think one of the big, that question you've just asked is the one I get the most is why are there PTs that are out of shape? Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't know, but I always <laughs> turn the question and around. And I don't know. <laughs> and I say, why are doctors out of shape? And doctors then I wonder the what is this thing yeah. where people seem, Yeah. because I mean, I'm just one of them people and, I don't know about you guys, but if I want to take advice of a businessman, he's got to have had some good businesses. Got to have some, got to have some, yeah. some big if cheese. I, if in I want about. to learn how to golf, he better be a good yeah, golfer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when it comes to coaches or people, if I want to learn from someone who has psychological mm. experience, it's got to be someone who knows what they're doing. So where's why is the the line go so low? I have I have seen there are out there like fat wrestling coaches, fat boxing coaches, fat Muay Thai coaches. But typically, they would have. They were done it. champions, though, they wasn't they? They were champions, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they discovered beer and pizza, and, and that's gambling. fine. 
Um, and I can, I can kind of wrap my head around that with, with the, with the, with the physical coaching. I'm, I'm not being a dickhead. I'm not, I'm not yeah, saying yeah, like yeah. you have to be in amazing shape, but it, I wonder like you're in the gym every day training people. What do you represent mm -hmm. and what is your brand? And if you're not, is it, okay, let me turn it on it. Let, ah, here's a way out so I won't get in trouble in the comments. You no, know, you, that, that ship has sailed. Okay, fuck that. Let me get to all the comments. I just go to the gym every day and train my clients, but I eat whatever I want. When I do my workouts, I don't push. I'm not following a protocol. Mm -hmm. I dabble at this. I go over here. I'm not sweating. I'm, there's no evidence of real effort whatsoever. Is it okay for me to take like 40 or 30 quid an hour off people? To, to, where am I leading them? Because I have not been... Can you lead somebody to a place? Ah, here we go. Can you lead somebody to a place that you've never been to? I don't think so. And people have called me arrogant because I have been, I've put this on Instagram before. I'm quite vocal about this. And mm -hmm. people have said, yeah, but the people who, you know, engineer the F1 cars can't drive them. And I, all these I, great I, analogies I, I get are that, good. But it's very different. But this isn't is it? different. Very different. This is different. How can I tell you about a place I've never been? Yeah. Mm. You're struggling with dieting. You're struggling with your hormones. You're struggling mm. with the weight you're lifting on the bar, but I don't, I don't really give a shit about my own. I just don't see how I could empathize with, with somebody. So I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I get that. And luckily what, they don't what, what really do too well. you said about the Formula One thing, that's something that, that I've, it's an argument that I've heard and it is a valid I get argument. It. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's like, yeah, you don't necessarily like, a vet has never been a horse. Yeah. Mm, the, I, that's a logical, mm, that's well, a logical uh, fallacy. Well, when I say never, um, <laughs> there are Have some, you there are just, some that look like horses. But I guess uh, best UFC coaches, for example, a lot of the time they could never have been the champion that they're, no. like Tyson Fury's dad was a boxer, but he wasn't Tyson no, Fury. No, no. And I guess people try and say that it's a genetic thing, but I think with fitness, it's quite a simple thing. Like you don't have to be Ronnie Coleman. You just have to show that you're living the life and, that you're trying to sell. I think mm. also with fitness, let's let's not go fitness. Let's let's go weight loss. You you are dealing with someone, someone's emotions. You are dealing with someone who is looking to you for guidance. Yeah. And if you are not in shape, your immediate response, if someone says, uh, right, you've not lost any weight this week, so what we're going to do, your immediate response is, yeah. That should be. Neither the fuck yeah. are you. There are charlatans yeah. everywhere. I yeah. will say there's so many industries full of charlatans, but the thing I love about the fitness industry and why I'm drawn to it is that you wear your progress. You wear, you, wear, mm -hmm. wear what you eat. Yes. You, what, you are your decisions. Yes. And everybody can see that. Yeah. So for me, that's what makes it special, mm. but it's also what I think takes away from, it makes, you, it makes it easy to spot charlatans in my opinion, yeah. mm. because it's very easy to go, hang on. Mm. This guy's telling me how to build big arms, but I see no arms. Yeah, I know if I know a few you know, coaches like that. Which is weird for me because I feel like they must know in their head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. That's so I'm I'm just thinking about this this Formula One thing. Like, so the logical fallacy, it's like it's an apples to oranges comparison. I don't mm -hmm. think it quite follows over. But then again, I am thinking there there must be out there people who've never competed in bodybuilding, but they have the equipment and the skills to Who take was somebody. that prep coach? They called him the wizard. Nathan Harmon. Nathan Harmon. Now, Nathan Harmon, I know quite well. He, and that's a good example. He, But he, he has a bio PhD in biochemistry. 100%, but he's not in shape. He's not in shape. And that, he's, a, he's a guy, when I was into bodybuilding, in, those, in that strange time of my life, I would use him as an example a lot when people yeah. said, should PTs be fit? I'd be like, well, yeah, they kind of should be. However, in some cases, and it was this Nathan Harmon. There will be an anomaly, won't there? Yeah, because Nathan Harmon, is he still going? Yeah, like, he is still I, going. I and he's know. better than ever now. He's got he a mentor. Was, he would. Yeah. He used to get all of the top guys in incredible shape. Okay, but he wasn't in any kind of shape himself. All right then. All right. So so I so I I, I would then walk back what I said earlier and maybe change it to, if I'm going to ask you the question, why should I pay you? He could give me an answer. He could pull yeah. out like twenty photographs and go, I did this. Yeah, I did this. I did yeah. this. I did we, this. There's always going to be outliers though, right? He we're, went we're down the education about the outliers, route. Didn't we're he? talking about the general. The, the, the thick, general, the thick end of the, the wedge, th yeah. yeah, statistically, yeah, the things, the people that we see on mm. on a not so much on a daily basis, but the people that we see uh, on Instagram, uh, in gyms, on on Facebook and stuff, a lot of them, you kind of go, can I just ask why the fuck you're not in shape? Yeah, I have something that I wanted to add to that. You were about okay. to say something there that makes me nervous. No, I I'm, I'm agreeing. I could go on all day about that. Yeah. So the last uh, sort of 10 years, really, I've been predominantly focused on business and building business and 
eating, well, you know, like Danny's tried to help me, Ant's tried to help me, like my eating schedules are shit. And I, they go, could you eat this, please? And I go, yes, I absolutely will. Rom, rom, rom. Did you eat what I told you to eat? No, no, I didn't. I'm not even sorry. I'm not. Are you sorry? No. Nope. At least you're honest. I'm still going on my face. <laughs> Why is there pizza in your eyebrow? Oh, sorry about that. It's not mine. <laughs> yeah. So it, 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 it hasn't happened, but then there were schedules where it did happen. Do you remember getting me on 75 hard? Mm -hmm. And I lived in Ibiza. Mm -hmm. I lived in my own House. People love 75 hard. Mm. From a bodybuilding point of view, I remember talking to Anthony at the yeah, time. It's not who, a fitness thing, is it? He was he was saying to me, what are you doing that for? Like, yeah. it's because it sounds daft. We're never going to get it. He's, it's he's not, not sustainable. He's not from the Caribbean. Yeah. He's, from, <laughs> he's from Newcastle. I was just going to say. Just to be clear. Just, one it is more. A, a different and when he's, when he's been in the gym with a few times and that's how the PTSD is him screaming at me, one more. You one didn't more, half Richard. pick probably one of the most brutal coaches in the in the world, I'd say. By the way, I didn't know Here's that a, he had that reputation. You, well, He's I did there. tell you, and you. Well, did. I'm a man, and you can't yeah. tell me anything. Right, don't, don't, who are you talking to? Dorian Yates's Dorian Yates's DVD, Blood and Guts, yeah. where it's considered he is the hardest training bodybuilder in history, is pushed by a man called Leroy. Leroy, that yeah. Leroy, Leroy Davis. Dorian only trained with him for two weeks in the in the DVD. Apparently, yeah. Leroy trains with Anth week okay, in week yeah, out yeah. for yeah. fucking ever. <laughs> Come on, Bales. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Diesel. Yeah. I I'd give up. So there you go. Yeah. He, uh, he he took me for, for and came to, to the world and took me for legs in Empowered. And uh, I was making noises like a, an ox that was being slowly sacrificed by being sawed to death with blunt instruments. I was actually upset. It was an emotional experience. Yeah. I was really upset because I was like, I'm going to... Vomit, I'm going to shit myself. I'm going to vom shit myself. Yeah. That was before cry. you even got to the gym. That was in the car on the way this there. This is why those coaches exist, Rich, that we've just ripped, because that mm -hmm. way you can go in and get a nice ego massage. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, yeah, I, You're so not like, going to pay him again, are you? Because you'll go in and you'll pay this coach 20 quid and they'll go, you're so good at this yeah, low press. You pay Anth once. You pay Anth once. That's it. <laughs> well, I'm not coming back. Yeah, you pay it, the rep counters all the time. I haven't, I've only trained with him, I think in total four times, but those four experiences stay with me and I'm not doing what he told me to do in the gym. No. I can't. Yeah, I, like, he is top tier. I said that when, when you said, right, me and I'm thinking of this work, I was like, listen, kid, I love you. <laughs> I don't want you I to can, die. I can tell you right now that yeah. you are not going to stick to this plan. Yeah. Well, I'm going to see how it goes. Like, yeah. I'll tell you yeah. again if you want. I can try yeah. and say it in French yeah. if that's easier. Yeah. You are not going to stick to this plan because you are not a bodybuilder. You are not a... You, it's an ethic. Not even a bodybuilder. It, yeah. you, it's yeah. hard. It's, it's like hard top bodybuilding. End. Yeah. And the ethic is, uh, what you said blood and guts. I think they have a brand that's like, it's called yeah, hardcore. I should or know. Like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, but Anth is literally known as yeah. like that Leroy Davis yeah. era, like Dorian Yates. And they're literally, they, they're known as like, they see the Americans as like, Weak compared yeah, right, to the way yeah. the British train and like the shithole gyms with steel and iron everywhere. That's so, worldwide known. So I took so I took that micro experience. I'm not like obviously I've only had like four yeah. sessions with him, but I've I've had a little insight into that world and his mindset. And I talked to him quite a lot. It's very simple. It's very yeah. this is what we're doing, and you're doing it until your central nervous system is screaming for you to yeah. stop. So we got that. And then I did the 75 hard thing, which I know to like if body bodybuilders go and look at 75 hard, they'll be like, what what is this mess? But for normal civilians, it keeps you to a level of accountability mm -hmm. that's significantly yeah. higher than we would not like mm -hmm. yeah. most of us just can't live like bodybuilders. No. We haven't got the mindset. 75 hard lures you in because you go, well, I I would probably do this. It's mm -hmm. not that bad. 75 inconvenient. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. just fucking inconvenient. To have to yeah. But I did make progress with it. So because of that experience and working with Ant, when I go to a gym, and I'm not trying to be a prick. This is, I, my background's martial arts. And we held each other accountable. Like if you're going to fight, you have to spar. Yeah. If you're going to fight, you've got to do your cardio. Mm -hmm. You can't show up the fucking belly if yeah, you've got a yeah, fight yeah. coming. So I'm looking at some of the people in the gym and I've had these experiences. I'm like, you're in here six days a week. It's not that hard to grow. It's not. It's not that hard to stay in shape. I, I know it's, I know I'm not in shape, but if it was my life, it just isn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. What's, what's happening? Why do you look like this? Why are you not developing? Why are you not changing? Or well, why do I see the, the development that's happening is just your belly and your eyes. It can be a lack of bigger. knowledge. Uh, I am in a few groups on Facebook. Uh, I don't go in them very often but they're like mentorship groups. Yeah. So a lot of people in these groups are new coaches. Yeah. Uh, new coaches that have done a weird thing and 
decided to pay a mentor first. Yeah. So teach someone the business game of it. And in these groups, I see it quite often. Hi guys, like, can anyone, uh, does anyone fancy coaching me? Because I don't actually know that much about, mm -hmm. you know, nutrition yeah, yeah. training. Yeah. Yeah. This is a coach that's charging 300 pound a month. Mm -hmm. I don't know that much and I'd love to know a bit more. And that's quite a common theme. Mm -hmm. You know, right. people aren't putting the mileage in these days. The people availability of social money. media, when, when I started, when you started, yeah. yeah, Facebook was there. No one knew how to fucking no use it. No one sold anything on Facebook. So yeah. now you've got the, you go, right, okay, so if I, if I put a, a picture of my abs up, so maybe I can sell a program for 20 quid. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they, so they do that. So there's no, you, you have this wide open market, which you believe that you can tap into. It's why most coaches fail mm. because they go, oh my God, I've seen him doing this. I've seen him doing that. Mm. Well, all he seems to do is put a video up of him doing a bench press or doing mm. this or doing whatever the fuck they do. I could do that. Mm. That is worth mentioning, isn't it? Most coaches, as mm. much as it looks like PTs are everywhere, mm. the, the, I'd say 75%, they get in going 10 grand a month. Mm. From sitting at home behind my computer mm. making videos, I'm in. Mm. Realise pretty quickly that, you know, they've exhausted all their options. They're coaching yeah, yeah, their yeah. nan, they're coaching their yeah. auntie, yeah, yeah, charging yeah. them, uh, you know, whatever. And, and then they realise it's actually quite difficult because you do need a reputation. People aren't stupid. Yeah, they're not as... They're, that's an interesting statement. It's almost like the marketing and coaching world assumes that the market is dumb. And it's like, I think that's a dangerous mm -hmm. assumption. Like people have said to me yeah. about setting up their own coaching businesses or trying to do what I do. And they have this, they come at me and they're like, I want to do what you do. And they've got this weird <laughs> smarmy, you know, <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 is that what you think I'm doing? Yeah. I'm, that I'm, is what you do? Uh, yeah. It's a hundred percent what I do. I'm actually reading the research. Yeah. I'm actually genuinely invested yeah, yeah, in yeah. helping people. I'm not just like, they're like, well, you just knock out a few YouTube videos and people give you cash. I'm like, no. In authenticity yeah, no, is yeah, easy to of. spot, isn't it? Yeah. I see it in these arm, like that the arm video thing. I don't care. You don't have to have super big arms, mm. but like when someone is doing a bicep curl and they genuinely have nothing. Yes. You've got to wonder, that's not authentic. Either they're deluded. They are deluded. Or they're trying to, they're thinking you, you're dumb. They, they, yes. I think a lot of people that's it. think that they are in better shape than they are. I wish I had that problem because the dark side of bodybuilding goes yeah. the absolute opposite way. Yeah. Yes. The um, body dysmorphia yeah, is like, you, go you look like shit, way. you look like shit, yeah, yeah, you yeah. look like shit, you no know, matter what. You get genuine pits in your stomach when you look mm. at yourself topless, you're like, I look, I yeah. just dreadful. So maybe there's an opposite side of mm -hmm. it, an opposite world where, where I, I want to live now. There's ways that people stand in the mirror to look at themselves to reassure themselves. Yeah. So girls who are checking out their own bombs, they turn around in the mirror and, and they're basically, they've stretched their hamstrings, they lean yeah, yeah, forward. Yeah. Yeah. So all of the cellulite is moved out of the yeah. out of the glute and out of the hamstring. Guys in front of the mirror probably turn their shoulders forward, tense the chest a little, and they're like, no, I look okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't know that when they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, just chatting to That's kind of why it's fun when she gets so experienced, because you do realize like, people do sit in weird ways. And you're like, yeah. I go, he's deluded. He's yeah. deluded. It's yeah. very easy to spot when you, yeah. when you know what you're looking for. And someone can't, I'd, I'd have, I'd wanted a straight to couch, Richard, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> I'd, I'd have wanted to be up here, but, uh, but we could, we all, I think, I think it's represented physically and psychologically. There is a way, there's a way, there's a way of looking at yourself that gets you the result that you want. The result that you want is to feel okay. I don't need to change. Everything is fine. And and we do it. So we psychologically flex. You look at your life in yeah. this way and you go, yeah, yeah. oh, everything. No, I'm cool. I'm doing really good. That's why people use filters a lot on their own. That's what I was going to get into. Because it? it's easier, mm. like you said, to change the way you pose, mm. to, to face tune your face in yeah, photographs yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or Photoshop them yeah. or get the perfect light. And it's easier to do that. Than, than the hard bit. Everyone looks like the elves, don't they? El 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 the face tune dolls. is out of control. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I, and you know how I spot that so easily? Because I've been so mentally diseased by body dysmorphia myself. Because mm -hmm. I look at these photos and I can see immediately yeah, yeah, yeah. the mm. way it's blurred, the way it's gone weird. It's Remember obvious. the dog filters that they all used to use? Yes. The dog's nose and the ears. Everyone, all of a sudden on Instagram. Went, every, every, everyone. Everyone. Swap that just for photo, plain out Goals. Photoshop. <laughs> it was only female. <laughs> it was only I'm female. remaining impartial. When and when and when a critical mass of women do it, all the women start doing it. Yeah. There was one afterwards that was had cute all over the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I was, I was looking at women who were thirty two, yeah, and yeah. I'd be like, you're in your forties, girl. Why, why have you? <laughs> when your fifteen year old niece does that, yeah, that's one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you do it, it's a different thing. I said that I'd been with women who strut around the room posing, demanding that I say that they're really hot, and you looked a bit shocked. Do women not do this normally? Am yeah. I just going out with? Uh, that sounds nutters? like I, you're going out with gym nutters and they do exist. So, right. Gym nutters, gym girl nutters. I've never experienced that level, but 
I'm living in an alternate reality. Yeah. Their wow. identity is associated with how they look and that's yeah. all they offer. Uh, to them, then it's sad because I don't think they mean that. It's just, no, no, it's they, sad because they're in their own head, they're like... No, they really were like that, Tyler. Yeah, they're sad, it's sad for a minute, though. <laughs> no, this is real. It's sad, yeah. They're doing that because obviously they don't feel good enough, right? There's a 50 cent quote that I saw on Instagram <laughs> and it was, if all if your greatest asset is your looks, you're going to do some ho shit. If your greatest asset is your looks, you're going to do some ho shit. True of men it's, and women. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd agree. And, and yeah. that's the problem with where the bodybuilding goes wrong is when you, all you are is a look. Because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not sustainable. Yeah, it's yes. your identity then, isn't it? It's and your, it's your Arnold being. did it so well because Arnold Schwarzenegger figured it out quite easy in bodybuilding that all you have to do is say, hey, mates, you're looking a bit shit today. Yeah, and you yeah, will completely yeah. psychologically <laughs> yeah. discombobulate their soul. And then they will completely fuck up the entire prep because that's how we sensitive. Yeah people are about how they look. Yeah. Was, he, was he doing that? He was an be, expert at that. Oh, if you, well, you, you, Psychological you obviously warfare. haven't because yeah. you're not a fucking weirdo. It, there's the film that they've seen Pumping Iron. <laughs> no. You've not seen that? Pumping Iron. No. Then, again, then again, Danny. But, yeah. Yeah. I was made to watch, I was forced to watch Blood and Guts. Blood, I mean, Dan, uh, uh, Anthony, Pump, Pump, Pump and Iron actually has a story. Pumping Iron yeah. is the original one. Pumping ah, okay. Iron is from yeah. the, the 70 yeah. something Olympian. 72 Olympian and South they, Africa. They, I think they followed... Um, the top contenders, they followed Lou Ferrigno, they followed, they followed Arnold, they followed Franco Colombo. Yeah. And there's there's a couple of scenes where... He says. Uh, they're all training together or something, aren't they? Yeah, and he's just going... Oh, and, and Arnold's going, uh, you look weak today, Lou. But that's all it Louis. takes. And, he, and they're going... Are you okay, Louis? <laughs> and Louis's going, ah, you can see him, he's, he's like 30 seconds from just throwing a dumbbell at him. Yeah. <laughs> or, or they'll say, you need a bit more carbs, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. flat. And Arnold would say, there's a famous clip of him on the couch with this broken Austria, and he's like, I just give them the wrong advices. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all it takes. I am like their father. Yeah. Because he just was aware of, advices. he's seen his body like Dorian Yates did as like a tool. His yeah, body yeah, was yeah. just his body. Whereas these fellas, like many of us, and I've been there, yeah. their body is them. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Arnold could yes. separate. He could be like, this is my work of art. This is what I'm working on. For them, it was them. And he was, when he targeted them, said, your calves are a bit weak there. That was it. I used to put pump and iron on after I'd been out. So it might be five o'clock in the morning and there'd be like loads of us go back to my flat in Liverpool and I'd be like, right, you put it on. should we put pump and iron on? And, and, they, and like they're going, put some tunes on or something. And it's like that going, no. And I'd have pump and iron on. I'd be like, this is a good bit. And they'll be going, can I go home now, should please? We get off? No. Yeah, Nobody's just, leaving. Just do it all the time. Nobody's leaving. I, I did, oh, uh, I, I, will, I will watch it. I think like when you, I think, I have thought over the years, like if you're going to be into martial arts, you do need to watch the fights. You do need to read the magazines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be into business. You should be consuming content. Your brain gets in there. And with bodybuilding, it's the same thing. Yeah. Like I'd never, Blood and Guts I enjoyed watching because I just, the, even the way it's shot, it's shot, it's it's crazy. shot yeah, yeah, on yeah, like yeah, a grainy did. camera. Yeah. And I was like, he, Anthony wanted me to watch it. I was like, okay, fine. If I'm going to get training with him, he wants me to watch this. And some sort of an ethic is conveyed. Yeah. There's no hope here. There's no happiness here. There's something terrible you are going to do to your body to force it to fucking yeah. grow. Blood and guts and that's great. it. I was like, wow, man. I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> well, the, 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 I, I never, I think I said this to you in the, the last time we talked, I never developed human beings psychologically work off fantasies. I never developed that fantasy, but I yeah. think you should. I think if you're really going to do it, yeah. you should, you need a, because in martial arts I did, you have like a martial arts based fantasy and ideal that you're working yeah, yeah. towards. I just never did. So I'm like this perpetual, I feel like a perpetual beginner whenever I, whenever I come mm -hmm. to the gym or whenever I'm that's learning. That's the best place to be. Yeah. I, well, I still enjoy it. I yeah, don't, man, I don't have so nice. trauma and bitterness or anything. With yeah. martial arts, I have all of that. Yeah. Okay. But with, with the gym, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just whatever. You should, and people say to me, you should do this. I'm like, yeah, fine. I'll do that. Cause I don't, I have no emotional attachment whatsoever. We to make it. it our identity. Yeah. And, you know, it always will remain a part. Because I guess when it's your first thing, you're really into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like with the martial arts for yourself, you do carry it quite. Yeah. And that's probably why we get annoyed at this, this whole, the culture of people who don't look like they train, telling you, I'll charge you 300 pound a month to train mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So that's quite annoying because we put a lot of time in to be able to get to these levels. But yes. at the same time, really, it shouldn't really bother you, should it? Because I, I, I it started maybe because I've spent more, since since the knee surgery, I've spent more time in the gym and spent more time focusing on it. I've, I've noticed these thoughts coming into my head where yeah. I used to not look. I was saying to you about back exercises. Uh, do I? you know what? I was literally just thinking, how can I squeeze this in? Yeah. That we were just watching people. There's something about back exercises this, this, in the gym you, now. You've definitely seen it. There's this weird new, like, we we just row and row and row and row, but you've got this. 
Danny, that's called activation. <laughs> but it's, but yeah, it's, 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 it's only, it's like that slow. It's like a peacock spreading its colours. It's like, look at me. I get the D handle and I'll attach that to something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've never seen this before. So you're going to be blown away. I'm going to over accentuate yeah. my stretch. And, they, and, and they, my they tripod's like going to capture it all. Twitch and a twitch and like yeah. a, a, a thing. And <laughs> we were just stood there yesterday going, yeah. <laughs> I seen it the other day. How I went in there and there was a row machine with which has handles. Yeah. It yeah. has these things you grab yes. and you pull. Yes. And um, it had two D handles hooked over it. Oh, so yeah. they've obviously went, well, I'm not going to, I don't want to grab I'm them. Use the normal that's, handles. That's fucking ridiculous. I'm going to bring these over. <laughs> I'm going to hook them on. And I, try, I, I, I tried it. I've got a picture on my phone. I'll show you after this. Yeah. I, I took a picture, but I didn't put it on Instagram. And, and I tried it. I went, I'm going to try this and pull it yeah. like they, and it was fucking shaking everywhere. And I thought they're being ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it with back exercise where now it just seems like nobody can just do a normal Normal. Just do a normal row. Yeah. What's wrong with it? It's not enough. I think not it's, for me. I had I'd to love, make it weird. <laughs> I'd love because I this is my big thing on Instagram, so I don't go on anymore. Because yeah. I have said there's something called a lateral raise where you lift a dumbbell like this and it makes yeah. your shoulders wider. Yeah. No one does them anymore. They do mm. cuffed ones. And yeah, they yeah, go, yeah, yes, yeah. what's that about? Yeah. The cuffed, the cuffed version. Because it just I think people don't they want to look unique. It must yeah. be that. I've decided it must be that. Wouldn't you wouldn't your forearms and your grip get better if you did it the traditional way? Yeah, it's just a better lift. The angle, the leverage, everything, everything. about it is better. It's <laughs> like the flies, you just take two dumbbells and you do that. Yeah. But they cuff no, both hands now and then the elbows, the, the elbows have got to come in and I'm like <laughs> I don't get it. And that's why they look so good though. So you're wrong. There you go. That's well, why I'm a all man the like people- that. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. What do you if you know? did look good, I'd be like, fuck, I might try that. Cause that's yeah. how I learned mm. everything I know. Yeah, Cause yeah, the big yeah. guy in the gym, oh, fuck, he's doing so. he must be doing something right. Just like the rich guy, just like the businessman, just like the psychologist, they, they're doing it. But when they're not looking good, but doing the fancy stuff, I can't justify it. Then, then you have a right to question it. Surely. I, the, 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 there's, there seems to be a problem with uh, simplicity and just not wanting to do simple stuff. Okay, here's, I'm, I'm going to be evil. Ha ha. Is it because, look, I'm too weak. And if you saw me just do a normal case. If you saw me row, doing a barbell row, you'd laugh. You, you, yeah, would, yeah, yeah. you would actually have the data straight away that I'm actually not very strong. But if I go, <laughs> and then it, like, I don't know, this weird Whatever that slow thing was. with a I know exactly drug. what you're talking about. I know, maybe that's it co- maybe it covers that I actually just don't know the movement and I'm not very strong. So it could be it could just be pure ego. I would love to get to the bottom of this. It's entirely possible. <laughs> it's into, I've been thinking about this for four years. Honestly, it, it goes when I sleep. I, would love I think to get about to the bottom of this. I've, it's, it's back. When it's, I shower, it's, when I sleep. Yeah. That's yeah. what I think about. I see, I see, what are they doing? I see people do it. It's, it's back movements. People are doing it with all the time, and it's to, to the point where I've even seen people now. Uh, demonstrating online on Instagram on YouTube like doing back movements with with like kipping as they do and I'm like why are you training the, people the to reason kip? they do it with back is probably because statistically it's the hardest muscle group to engage right that is the hardest muscle group when you start training you'll get a pump in your chest no problem yeah. your arms mm. will inflate yeah. your delts mm. your legs will feel like they're made of lead yeah. but your back is very difficult because it's got a large surface area mm. and I think instead of them putting the time in and doing the barbell row the pen lay row the single arm row the chin ups yeah. Yeah. and developing because people don't realise this as you get bigger yeah. more muscular you develop more sensation you you can right. get better pumps and feel more engagements. So instead of them being patient and doing the right stuff, they think, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do these over-sensationalized exercises that are going to engage me better than anything else ever. And that's why you see them doing that because they can't engage in the other stuff. They're trying to do something to engage their back because they can't get engaged. When you say engaged, you mean like neurolo- up, yeah. neurologically, they can't, there isn't that mind muscle yeah. connection. Because when you get, train, you know, like if you do a good yeah. set, your arms, you can, and you can feel it. You can see your chest, you can yeah. see your shoulders to the extent and your arms, but you can't see your back. Back is very hard to get engaged. It's a well-known thing, but what does everyone who's been through it say? Just persevere. Mm. Do yeah. the movements with good form, yes. great tempo, yes. and you will develop neurologically, you will yeah. develop muscularity-wise, and you'll yeah. develop with the capillaries and blood flow and you'll get a better pump. But instead they're cutting that short and doing made up shit yeah. that doesn't actually have much basis. Because once you get really heavy with these single arm things on that cable, mm. you're never going to get any progress. You're not going to progress any further. Because it's too fucking heavy. You're, your legs, the position you're in, yeah, you yeah, haven't yeah. got the basis. It just can't take it. It's, yeah. it's doomed to fail. Uh, I actually hadn't thought as well, just just that very simple point. You, it's the one part you just cannot see. No, yeah. you can't, can't, you can't, no, you, you've got no... No feedback, as it yeah. were. Can't, yeah, you've got no visual feedback. Like yeah. if you're doing... I know, if, like Tyler said, if you're doing flies, mm. you can see the, the, the chest moving. You yeah. can see it all going. Your biceps, you can see them going, but your back, 
nothing. Notoriously Can't hard. Really, notoriously hard. See it. Yeah, that's that's the one thing. I've, I maybe maybe I'm getting old. I'm like I, I, I try not to look at people in the gym because no, it, get, do, it doesn't do any it doesn't do me any good. It's none of my business. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's none of my business. And then I'll be like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> but I don't know. Is it your business? Because I've been trying to learn to be more authentic in life. Because I'm too kind. I've been told I wouldn't tell someone. But if yeah. you're actually doing someone a favor, someone a favor by saying, "Listen, your yeah. exercise is shite. Your program's shite. I've watched you all week. You need to get a life. I'm going to help you." <laughs> yeah. Are you not helping them out. Yes. Yes. Because, because they want to be more muscular. Really, they're not really interested in looking fancy. I'm sure. No, I think I I do I do have that that feeling uh, that that out out of authenticity, out of kindness. Like what you're doing right now is you're probably spending an awful lot more time in here than you need to for very, very yeah, poor yeah. results. You could be in here a lot less and doing other things and get much, much better results if you just stop being silly. I trained in an old school gym. Stop being from when silly. I, from when I was 17, I trained in an old school gym. And mm. let me tell you, you know what Dorman, Dorman looked like back in the yeah. day? Yeah. Look like look like orcs off Lord of the Rings. We were in uh, Rockies cool in tattoos. One of them, one of them, yeah. yeah. yeah and Rockies, I loved yeah. it. And if I did fucking, if I did a dumbbell lunge or something like You'd that, thrown yeah. out. They go, listen, mate, that bar, yeah, you fucking yeah. squat it. Yes. And I, and and that is that was what they were like in there. Yes. And they'd tell you, and I, I didn't like them telling me, but that was the culture in there. Yeah, yeah, it was Save, like, do saving this. Your time. Yeah. yeah. And it's saving me time. And, yeah. I, and I did, and I did the basics because they were learned from probably the guys in the 90s and then yeah. the 70s and then the 50s. In, in the martial arts culture, generally, we were probably too aggressive with it, but that was absolute. Like you just yeah. wouldn't let somebody do the wrong you wouldn't just let someone do the wrong thing over and over again yeah 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 you couldn't it, was, it wasn't uh, it was haram <laughs> it was haram <laughs> Danny where can people find you um, people can find me wherever you are Richard always always um, Instagram Danny Wilson coaching Facebook <laughs> Danny Wilson who should come to you what's, what's the what's the, the the main group of people who should be coming to you I like I <clears throat> like coaching women between 35 and 55 yeah. who have specifically, who believe that they have tried everything, who have a mental roadblock, who are creating problems in their own mind, which is stopping them achieve the results that they want, whether that's physically, mentally, or emotionally. Yes. Uh, I've kind of moved not so much away from pure fitness. No, I've moved away from pure fitness coaching. Everything I do will always have a fitness element yeah. because of everything that we've just spoke about today, about the, the about the link between the physical and the mental. Yes. Um, but a lot of the people that, that I work with have come to a point where they've basically given up and they've been like, well, this is me. Yeah. I, I can't do this. I can't do that. So that's, that's the people who I, who, I, who I like working with and who I get the best results with. And the first port of call for you usually is Instagram. Instagram or Facebook. Okay. And it's Danny Wilson Coaching. Danny Wilson Coaching. Tyler, where can people find you and who should come to you right now? Oh, you had a great, you nailed it there. The mm. age, everything, wow. the niche. It's um, not my first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you if you have Americans watching this, if I have Americans watching me, you can still reach, me out, reach out to me on Instagram. It's Tyler Cookzilla. Uh, we also have the company mentioned if anyone was interested in getting your bloods run, if you're interested in getting your hormone panel looked at uh, and taken care of professionally, it's called thehealthguys.com. If you're in Britain or anyone else, uh, I tend to work with, I'd say males predominantly, but anybody that's willing to get themselves to, 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 to where they want to be. I'm usually the last, I'm like the final boss on a game. You know, yes. when you've tried everything else, you've done the stupid shit. If you want the facts, you want to get it done. Um, Tyler Cooks are on Instagram and we can look at doing something there as well. Wonderful stuff. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank time. you, man. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And we look forward to speaking to you again very soon.